Ladies and gents, it has been a long qualifier. Well, actually, it's been quite a short qualifier. If you think about it, it's only been a couple weeks. But for these players here, they have played three rounds already. And they have been convincing rounds for both of them. Uh, different storylines for these two. But uh, still, fantastic play all the way through the qualifier. And if they were to win here, oh my god. If they were to win here... They would move in and be in the main event of Hidden Cup, which means their names would be hidden. They'll be playing on a hero, and of course, the prize pool is much larger. And Mihai is the underdog here. And Mihai has come forward to lame early with the Incas. And we're catching up to live time. He's not actually moving this fast. And this seems like a dream of a start here for Mihai. We have not seen that many boar steals. Boars do generate on the back of someone's base. But for Vinchester, he was pushing in some deer. Vinchester didn't expect it, maybe. And he might not realize his boar is gone here. Or maybe he does. And maybe he's happy he's Tatars and has some extra food on his sheep here. So just to continue with the storylines real quick. Mihai, he falls into that description of next generation. Now, guys, I don't have small trees for this game. I apologize there. But you know, Mihai... Been much improved over the last year or two. There's been a lot of chatter about him and his, you know, potential. And he also talked a lot about how he wants to compete. And he maybe felt like there was a certain period of time that he could commit to it, being like 21 or 22. But man, oh man, I mean, his eagle runs right back over here and Vinchester's going to get the kill. So that's not great for Mihai. But man, has he looked good in this qualifier? He looked super smooth against Overtaken. I thought he had a really, really tough bracket against overtaken um things were things were clean overtaken i thought that was going to be a 50 50 set he won 3 1 and then against margugu he also won 3 1 but he's got to get through vinch now and vinch where would you guys put him twitch chat w would you put him in your top 10 still i think he was in everyone's top 10 for a year or two maybe three maybe maybe even closer to four but 2023 was a bit below the level that we had grown accustomed to with Vinchester. So that's why there was some level of question. But Vinchester has looked sharp. So Vinchester has to be the favorite. He was in Hidden Cup 4. Played very well in Hidden Cup 4, if I remember. And anyways, a little awkward for us to see these villagers behind the trees. But Mihai, he will have small trees. And he is looking to get kills. Keep in mind, no eagle here. But he's got militia on the way. So he steals the food from Vinchester. And then he spends the food to go attack Vinch. Now, if the eagle was alive, the eagle could contribute with the attack and block and whatnot. The eagle or the scout is normally a big part of this type of strategy working. Vinchester showing no fear so far. He's not stressed at all, and he's he's happy to show Mihai, I will fight you with villagers, no problem here. So, so far, these militia have not even engaged. So clearly a lot of respect there. I, I personally would say you've got to try and find an engagement. Maybe he will. There's a weak villager. It's three militia. It's not two. Could maybe do something. And, well, nothing has happened so far. But behind this, we have Fuelage on the way for Mihai. Look at how much food he has underneath this DC. You start with a llama as the Incas. So that's plus 100 food. And then he stole the board. And he also stole two pigs. So he's got food for, for days here. Feels very realistic that if these things are still... Um, if these are still alive and healthy, that these will be man-at-arms soon once he's in feudal age. Vinchester just casually building a house here, trying to fight off the militia. It's getting close. It's getting close. But Vinchester can click a little bit faster. And yeah, maybe man-at-arms is less likely now. Okay, so clearly in between games, we're going to put on small trees, right? But another thing I wanted to bring up. Actually, quick. Let me just double check this graphics. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, oh, I'm just stupid. Okay, uh, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> I, I just assumed. Um, the other thing that I should uh, definitely add, though, is the Boxing Villagers mod. We should probably have that back. And the Boxing Villagers mod, uh, we have an emote for now in the Twitch chat. So it's T90 Box, and it's hilarious. And uh-oh, 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 Villagers trapped. Who needs three militia when two can do? Just kidding. The third militia would be very much valuable here. And wow, creative from very well done from Vinchester. Like, I don't know how Vinchester was able to be so relaxed throughout this. But very well played from him. Gets his farming eco up. He's got scouts out. Behind this, though, for Mihai, he's got an archer range. He's going to have eagles. He's going to have spears. And he's just producing so much army. 
I would consider the Incas the better civilization. Incas, I think, are in many people's top three right now for a map like Arabia. The Tars have their bonuses, of course, but having less food at the start certainly slows down the Tatars. But any engagement that happens on a hill is going to be very good for the Tatars, and there's quite a few tiny hills throughout this. But, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that emote's amazing, right? <laughs> I, I wish we had this emote for the Capwatch MBL series. <laughs> there is so much vil fighting in that series. It's unbelievable. Oh, man. People... I, I've been seeing people talking about that series everywhere as well. It was a really fun one. Excited to see MBL. I think MBL's on the cards for our third set today. MBL Ganji. Like so many people would love to see both those players in the main event, but only one will be able to do it today. So here comes a really difficult army for Vinchester to deal with. This type of thing is tricky, right? You've got the spears in the mix and then the early archers. And what you're going to need is your own ranged units. But that's not going to be so easy. Now, Vinchester is really trying to, to do all this while simultaneously maybe realizing that army is going to show up on the other side. And Villager goes down there. Vinchester able to get one kill. Vinchester's going to find another. And that's two Villager kills from Vinch. And like so far, guys... And look at this. Vinchester also damage control here. So far, there's just a bit of a class difference here in terms of the damage control. How is Vinchester able to survive against everything that came his way and then also kill two villagers? That is so impressive from Vinchester because this army should actually have more potential right now. This army should be killing four or five villagers. So impressive from Vinchester to start it off. And he's going to bring some scouts home. He's going to have some skirms now. He bought himself just a little bit of time. And that's the type of thing we're talking about here. What well, we're talking about the class of the players. And in a best of seven, if Vinchester can be consistent with moves like that, he is definitely going to be the favorite, as many people thought coming into this. That's crazy, man. Killing the Vils, there's spearmen around, right? So he had to avoid the spears, kill the Vils, and also had the nice defense. Res Collected is still very close. You can see that at the bottom left of the screen. And there's more archers coming in. This can get tricky. There's also eagles in the mix. And I'm not sure I like this fight for Vinchester at all. I think this is an awful engagement. There's too many spearmen in there. You can tell he tried to use his skirmishers against the spears there. Didn't really get the hits he wants. Because he doesn't have upgrades. And all of a sudden, Mihai, I mean, he's super consistent in these attacks. And he's on the hill. He's got the eagles for the skirms. He's trying his best to keep the archers next to the skirmishers. And the skirms still have weakened some of this. The spear back here needs to be focused down. It is going to be focused down. And wait. Wait a moment. Vinchester able to hold. Killed a lot of the archers. Will kill all the archers now. Ends up losing one villager. I think in the end though, right? Obviously, this is Vinchester defending again. But in the end, this is at Vinchester's base. And I think that... You know, Mihai evening up the KD a little bit more is certainly pretty good for him. Behind this, the Spearman blocking the market, but the market's going to be used to maybe get up to the next stage. But we have another attack from Mihai, who again runs right into the Skirms. And I think he, he continues to think that the Eagles are going to do a good enough job against the Skirms, which they will. But Vinchester, of course, has had the scouts, so it's really tricky to get your timing right. The fletching wasn't in for Vinchester this whole time, which honestly makes some of these engagements really impressive. And uh, Vinchester could actually just hold this hill for the time being. But hey, I mean, usually this is when we're talking about Castle Age, right? And Vinchester spent a lot of food. Skirmishers and scouts. Lots of food costs there. Eagles and archers, not so much. Obviously, archers don't cost any food. Eagles do cost a little, but it's even cheaper for the Incas. And Mihai... He wants to finish this game fast in Castle Age. Sells all of his stone. Uses the market to click up. And there he goes. He's on the way. And this is a really good time compared to Vinchester. Now, the army is still somewhat vulnerable. Vinchester's army could always kill this still with some good micro. I think it's an important time for Vinchester because if these eagles even are upgraded... No, not even upgraded. If the eagles just make it to Castle Age, they'll automatically get the 7 attack. Right now, they're just working with four. So here comes Vinch. Like we said, great damage control from Vinch. But Mihai has been super consistent. I said for him today, I think even if you lose the first game, you want to feel like it's close. And so far, it looks like they're the same caliber of player. It looks seems like they're very, very even. 
It's just crazy, man, how easy it is to spam out of, like, the barracks and the range. That's what everyone's doing these days with Mezzo. And Incas especially, they just save so much. Their eco's so good. It just feels like the Civ can always pump out more army. And Vinchester, who's had a great game here, still has not clicked up. He is going to go for the great house walls over here. But there should be vulnerabilities somewhere, right? Vulnerabilities here to break through. Vulnerabilities here. And Vinch is actually just going to back up with his ranged units now. Doesn't want to be called out, which is probably smart. And now he moves forward with his scouts. Fun start to this game. Eco KD 2 to 1. It's going to be Crossbow. It's going to be Bod Canero. And Eagle Warrior may come in, but I really do think it's just going to be primarily range units for Mihai. So again, to clarify this, um, or just to bring it up again, we are playing on a patch which was given to me for Hidden Cup. And so the when you see these range units move now, especially against Siege or something, it should be a lot more fluid. We shouldn't see the, the regrouping problem. So I think in... You know, some ways, we're going to see players going for archers a little bit more than they were in the first couple weeks of the qualifier. So, Vinch is going to have the tower here. And, you know, you never want to tower too close. Right? If you towered here, this could be denied. Look at Mihai. He found the vulnerability, didn't he? There was one area without a house. Vinchester's still two minutes away from clicking up to the next stage. Now, meanwhile, Vinch is going to find a villager kill. That's very nice. So, that's, that's a nice find with some scouts. But, I mean, Mihai is forced to tower. Vinchester's castle age time is so late. Now, if he was in castle age now, he'd get crossbow. He gets thumb ring instantly with the Tatars. And he's sitting on the hill. It could be fine. But with Mihai's micro, this could be horrible for Vinchester. This could be this could be brutal. Vinch is going to have to micro with a numbers advantage. But obviously down in upgrades. And he doesn't care, dude. He doesn't care. Again, really impressive micro from Vinchester, we have to say. And he actually runs through the Eagles in towards the Archers here. Clearly a little distracted now. You could tell he was looking at something else for a moment. But honestly, I still... Obviously, this is going to be great for Mihai because Mihai's finding value. Mihai's finding engagements. But the start for Vinchester was so much better than you would have thought. This is probably where he was looking, though. He had crossbows there. And behind this, we have... Elite Skirm being tacked now from Mihai as he's going to make a switch. Two TCs for him, so he should gain a villager advantage here, especially because he's killed an extra one over the last couple moments. And, well, still hasn't gotten more kills. Vinchester's in the game. But that's not what you want to hear, right? Obviously, Vinchester's not hearing this. But if you're a big Vinch fan right now, you don't want to hear he's in the game. You want to hear he's taking the game. Game number one, big favorite, was in Hidden Cup 4. Up against this next generation player. Well, Vinchester gets his upgrades here. Vinchester dives in close. Vinchester's going to end up getting the kills here. I like Mihai's micro, though. Look at this. He's like, I can do it too. Gets an extra kill. I can do it too, Vinch. And, I mean, the micro is just unbelievable. Finally, he ends up... up no, crossbow's still alive. Finally, the crossbow goes down. No ballistics upgrade here for Mihai. But look at the economy, guys. Like, so many players out there are able to get decent crossbow timing down. There's a lot of players who are really good in Arabia. But it's the eco that really can separate players, right? The best of the best. And he's so much eco. You look at him spending his resources so consistently. And then Vinchester's resources are kind of all over the place here. You can tell that this attack has really took its toll on Vinchester. Vinchester has to add a Siege Workshop. Still microing. Adding a Scorpion now, which could force this away. Vinchester's still going to be in the game, but no second TC for him. Eco's not really what he would want it to be right now, so pressure is on Vinchester to come back. Because these are elite skirms with full Castle Age armor. The crossbows can't do anything about that. That's why the Scorpion is here. Someone says, pros are amazing. Every viewer would have just died. <laughs> hey, you said it, not me. <laughs> All right, hey, I didn't say it. Chillbird had said it, guys. Don't be offended. Knight there. No upgrades. And there's still some crossbows in the mix. So a knight with no upgrades will not contribute as much as Vinchester would have wanted. No ballistics yet for Vinch. You could tell he wanted it. He rushed down the university really early. And still no second town center. So I know that for Mihai, he hasn't had the 
Well, no, it's I, I, that would be even be incorrect to say. He's had a pretty good start with the TCs. The TCs are up. They should be producing. And he will gain a bigger and bigger vill lead as these skirms just run right in towards the Scorpion and the Knight and go in to get those crossbow kills. And this Scorpion is actually going to go down now. And it's just... It's just like every time Vinchester has that next step, which normally you're expecting to change something for you, he still can't really breathe much. He does have three crossbows here. Now, Incan villagers are affected by infantry armor upgrades in Castle Age. We've got a pause now, but at this point, we haven't seen much infantry play yes. from Mihai. I guess Vinchester dropped for a second. And uh, so he doesn't actually have any armor upgrades, which... I'm not really used to. Typically, you're seeing the Incas, they would have researched one armor upgrade, and then these villagers wouldn't be going down so quickly. But he's actually lost a lot more. And how on earth, I gotta say it again, how on earth is Vinchester not dead? How has he found more villager kills? Like, everything has gone so wrong for him so many times, and he continues to stay in the game. Beautiful value from, from Vinchester. But again, I gotta state, like, res collected should be very difficult for him because of the lack of villagers in the long run, right? The vill count only continues to grow for Mihai. So will Mihai recognize that? Will Mihai be able to defend himself here? We'll see. Vinchester's still nerding out. We've got the nerd emote to describe both of these two, actually. It's actually a photo of me, but yeah, anyways. Um, and here comes the crossbows moving forward. And the crossbows have thumb ring, like we said, but ballistics will be in for Mihai in now and vinchester should realize this in a moment when he's running side to side yeah he's getting hit by these and he's gonna have to try and micro against that and he's also gonna bring in some siege now he hits the first shot also has the hill siege workshop for mihai needs to go up this is a really important position big micro moment in this game attack rounds from vinchester are landing these are great hits for vinch if he can hit the skirms now too it could be amazing he doesn't but Still, even though Mihai takes out the siege, Vinchester will have some knights for the skirms. The skirms are separated from the crossbows. And just as Vinch gets excited, just as he thinks, I've got ballistics now too and I can snowball this, he sees a siege workshop here. Really tricky, right? You do not really want to be staying around here for too long. But a little bit of panic for Mihai and Vinchester just really piling on the pressure. He's making more knights. He has upgrades, which he didn't have before. He's now camping next to the workshop. The knights ultimately won't end the game. A couple knights might be needed here to pick off the siege. And Vinchester, oh my god! Vinchester's gonna keep his siege in the minimum range of the opponent's siege. No! Okay, his knights actually blocked it. He's gonna pick off the siege. What? Okay, that is really impressive. He had to notice right away and to think to do that instead of thinking uh i don't know maybe pulling the siege the other direction which is what i would do is just wild to me and now he's gonna have another moment where he can try and do this and what guys vinch's micro has been unreal uh, absolutely unreal i mean sometimes players need a warm-up so impressive from vinchester he's down by 20 villagers right he's being completely outboomed here but the fighting the engagements has been amazing and vinchester's like i'm gonna catch up Second TC now. Third TC for him. And uh, again, really strong army. Really strong army. He's getting plus two armor for the knights. He's got crossbows moving this way. That should lead to a couple villager kills. I don't know where these vills are going right now for Mihai. But he probably maybe he selected all of his idols and told them to go a certain direction. He actually doesn't have... Okay, he found some wood in the back. But a lot of his wood lines are rangeable. This gold, for example, he's just run out. So he's come out here, which Vinchester can see. And he does have the gold here. Like, he just needs to try and settle down a little bit. And if he can settle down, then this can be a different situation. He's still losing lots of vills. Vinchester finds a couple more kills. But now the crossbows are separated from the rest of the army here. And the knights are going to be needed. Now, Mihai has already added monks. And Mihai can just convert the knights. But Mihai needs to micro the crossbows. And now Vinchester needs to be careful he doesn't lose too many knights. Vinchester actually kills the traitor knight with the crossbows, maybe. The siege is still connected. There's just so much happening. And guys, they're expected to have economy as well right now. And Vinchester has brought this game back. And Mihai has, has played phenomenally. And, and this is kind of what I said, right? 
If you're the underdog, because you played very well, you want to feel as though it's you're in the same class as the opponent. I think if you lose this game and you know that you were three town centers against one, you may feel like, oh boy, the guy I'm up against here is just on another level than me. Obviously, Mihai's still able to stabilize this. Just so impressed with Vinchester and how he's played this. We do have a castle here from Mihai. I love the stone walls. I love the house walls. I love the defense he played to keep him less exposed on the sides. And I wonder if we'll see Kamiooks now. Now, Kamiooks could be pretty interesting. A couple of villagers are also escaping here. And they're just going to build outposts around for vision. There's not really much going on over there. But, I mean, you're you're still deep in Castle Age right now, if you're Mihai. You still need to find engagements that work for you. And I guess it's going to be primarily Crossbow and Monk. Vinchester loses a knight, but kills the Monk. Yeah, I guess if you go too heavily into ranged units, the siege becomes a continuous problem. And, oh, Mihai distracted! Mihai getting rocked! And, I mean, this is just phenomenal play. Like, it's insane. I was not... We're expecting an insane level, right? We're expecting a player to qualify for a Hidden Cup main event, right? But the level that Vinch has brought with his unit control is just insane. I can't remember feeling this way about Vinchester's play for quite a bit of time, honestly. Oh, man. Is Vinch going to see that? Vinch is going to see that. Uh-oh. Yeah, you got to cancel that one here, buddy. You got to cancel that one. Yeah, he realizes he's been spotted. So he wants... It's kind of interesting because Vinchester wants to push through the middle. And now Vinch needs to keep a close eye on this gold. But yeah, the, the reason for that castle is to protect that gold. Another insane micro move from Vinchester. As he just refuses to lose units. It's unbelievable. It is just unbelievable. It's continuous what this guy's doing. He kills the siege. He kills all the monks. He kills all the crossbows. Explain to me... How someone can take engagements that good with such consistency. And now we have a castle for Mihai. And Mihai will likely complete this one so we can take that gold. But he could have some problems elsewhere still. And Vinchester is going to see this. Uh-oh, Vinchester knows about it. Why? Because he made outpost over here. And yeah, I think Mihai's castle will still go up. Vinchester senses that. Mihai even microing now. <laughs> and uh, wow, what a game. This is just crazy. And so, you know, Mihai's done everything he can to try and just stabilize and get up to Imp, right? Which is where the next step really needs to happen for him. The problem is, and the tower's a really good move, actually. The problem is, Vinchester still has, like, two minutes where he can still range some things and, and create some headaches. Now, I did see Mihai had a knight over here for a moment, and he counterattacked with that. That's good from him. But, like, if Vinchester knew that Mihai was taking this woodline, for example, he'd just be pressuring there as well. So now, I wonder what unit comp you want to go for if you're Vinch. Because Vinchester will fear the Kamiuk. He, uh, in his previous round, he played as Incas against Slavs, and he, he went fully Kamiuk. It was a really, really fun game. And, well... He's going to walk forward here, and he wants to drop a castle. Keep in mind, he's not imp yet. He's not clicked up yet. And his opponent's already well on the way. But Vinchester wants to pile, keep the pressure piling on here. And Vinchester is going to click up finally to the Imperial Age. But this is a castle that will go up mainly for Trebs. And Mihai still has the eco lead. Mihai has the eco lead. Mihai's dropping barracks in the back. Mihai has access to gold. Mihai will be an imp faster. This should be advantage Mihai, despite everything that Vinchester's done and how impressed we are with him. And Tatars, I, I think, like... I mean, Incas just have a counter to everything, so it's really complicated either way you look at it. But I think, like, if you go Cav Archer, there's going to be Eagles out there that your opponent can go for. If you go for Cav, your opponent can go for Kamiooks or Halps. Incas just basically have no counters. And Mihai who has had to weather so much here is is in a position where he can take the first game as the underdog. Crazy games. I'm so excited to see the rest of this series already. Okay, so Vinch. He'll know now. It's unlikely this castle stays up. 
He is just going to take this stone. I love Finch's vision right now. The outposting around the map is huge. Actually, I don't know if he'll notice that. But there's villagers escaping from Mihai. And those villagers might be looking for a gold. Maybe get to this gold or something. Keshik is actually a really nice unit. And since he has plus two armor, he might be hoping that Mihai sends the trebs here and he can snipe them. Finchester dropping stables though. So he's actually going knights. So I think he's planning to go cavalier here as the choice because he needs something against Elite Eagle. It's good, good call here from Vinch. He's kind of in the dark on what his opponent's doing. It's a really good call. And oh god, we've got barracks here as well from Mihai. Vinchester also seeing the stone walls here. But yeah, Vinch's castle is going to go down. I actually, I don't mind the Cavalier choice. It's unorthodox because you don't think about Tatars having any unique bonuses for Cavalier, and that's true. But I think it's a really nice choice. Vinchester will think my opponent's going to run out of gold at some point. Right? This gold here. He also has seized this gold. But I mean, it... it Mihai has done such a good job with his eco behind this. He's still got plenty of gold to work with. There's no question. And Castle goes down for Vinch just like that. And now he's got eagles streaming into the back of his eco. And best of luck to you, Vinchester. I mean, your amazing micro can't save you now. You, you have to get the Cavalier in the right spots. And you have to get defensive castles after losing a castle on the front. And Mihai has been so consistent. He's been so smooth. And he's just clicking the Pikeman upgrade, which will, of course, be perfect against the Cavalier. And it is going to be so tough. To survive from this eagle raid. Elite eagles are just so difficult to stop. Because you can just split them up, right? You get them into one tiny little position. You, you just get one eagle into an area your opponent doesn't realize. And 20 villagers can go down just like that. And that's what's happening now, right? This castle's forced because of the eagle raid. Here the cavalier defending from some of the eagle raids. And there's just going to be yellow units in Winchester's eco. Non-stop it feels like. And... Mihai has just waltzed forward with these treps and is immediately going to go for this castle. Well, actually, hold the phone. He might not do so. There's quite a few Cavalier, and I think he realizes he needs some Palb first. Vinch is taking this gold here. Vinch still has good vision on the map, but what Vinch doesn't actually have vision on, and he probably didn't realize that the eagles that were coming in this way were being produced from there. He doesn't know that the Vils were here. That villager escape, finding this extra gold, building up this TC, building the barracks, is going to be a big deal here for Mihai. And now is the problem, right? So you've gone for the Keshik and you've gone for the Cavalier, which can hold against the Eagles. But now your opponent, with the same barracks, can make Halb. They don't even need the Kamiuk. And then keep in mind, the food cost on all of this is cheaper for the Incas. There's no discounts for Vinchester right now. This game is 10 times harder for Vinch from here. 10 times. Can he find a way? Because he can't fight Halbs anymore. And there's going to be 35 of them. He needs Cav Archers out there. Does find a nice engagement here with the Keshiks. So that's decent enough. Here come Halbs and Trebs though. So he'll need to defend from this. Is massing Cav Archers somewhere. Winchester's trying his hardest. Or he did come in here as well. I'm sure Winchester would love a castle on this flank. The Trebs protected by Halbs. Cav Archers are not quite there yet for Vinch. And Vinch will likely lose this castle. Can we please salute Mihai for not trickle trebbing? It's been such a messy game. It is expected at this level. I'm not just trying to, you know... I, maybe I'm giving credit to a player for something that should be obvious. Because I have made it clear that I feel it's obvious for a long time. But he waited. He didn't go for one or two trebs. He waited for that four stack. And then, it, it, like, Vinch is ready to react to this. But by the time Vinch was able to get something together, the castle's already down. That's kind of the whole point of going in with four. Did did Mihai delete like 30 villagers somewhere? Didn't he have 150? I think Mihai deleted a bunch of vills. He had 150 at some point. Now he's at 115. He definitely did. He did it for the big army spike. And I'm not... I, I didn't see the bodies... But it's a smart move when you think you can afford so much. He's actually not mining any gold right now. That's going to change in a second. So fully up, full upgrades on infantry. Vinchester, though, is close to full upgrades on cav archers. Which is wild. 
We'll have exposed villagers here. Needs to needs to micro this so perfectly here if you're Vinch. The Vinch is a big villager lead. Will that stay the case? He does have two relics, and there's none here for Mihai. Keep in mind, if you want to go something like Skirmisher as the Incas, it's also cheaper on food. Incas were always a solid sib before. Players would pick them. They wouldn't pick them first. But then once the Incas received the, the bonus of the cheaper units as well, that's where everyone's been saying they're really strong. And Vinchester building his castle so far back into his base, but he's not going to call it quits yet. Still thinks he's got a chance. These Cavaliers are going to run over here, I think, to the gold. Yeah, Vinchester remembers that. He was there before. But now, he doesn't have protection for his Cav Archers at home. And he needs more units here. He's going to produce a couple Keshiks. He's sitting in the choke. So the Castle Fire can help. Actually, it was a decent fight for Vinchester. And Vinchester finds some Villager kills. Vinchester still has lots of vision here as well. He's going to get into the wood line as well. And we are not finished. He's going to run right into the back of the Eco. But can he stop the traps? He needs to keep his castles up here. This is a crazy attempt from Vinch to stay alive in this game. What a performance from both. This will have to be tracked. There's actually not many villagers there anymore. These Cavalier got some kills. These Cavalier got some kills. Vinchester repairing his castle. So he might think he has a chance. His Cav Archers are doing a pretty good job right now. But if he, he would need like... A couple extra, like an extra minute here, and then maybe he can clear this and take the trebs. Again, it's the same deal. Those four trebs have done so much. That castle will fall. And even though villagers are dying here, and villagers are going to die here, Mihai's army count is extremely high, and Vinchester's base is wide open to raids. Vinchester doesn't have castles anymore. He just can't get in close enough to those trebs, but he's still alive. Because of these villager kills, and he's killing Incan villagers. They're also they're still armored, right? And it looks like Vinchester found an area that Mihai's not paying attention to. Wow. The Cav archers are 21. Vinch does have two relics, which I need to continue to remind you about. So that is golden come for him. What about Mihai? Mihai's just mining gold with these villagers. Mihai's down to 94 villagers. Does Vinchester have a chance? He's got such a big economy. Does Vinchester actually have a chance in this? Crop rotation? So these farms, when they reseed, they'll last a whole lot longer? Vinch hasn't taken his main stone in a, in a while? He says, who needs stone? Because my castles are just going to get trebs down anyways, Vinchester? These, these trebs are so important, right? Continuing to drop castles as well with these trebs now that your army might end up dying. So important. These Cav Archers are doing a really nice job, guys. Mihai has nothing on gold right now. He actually transferred to wood with those bills, which is kind of interesting. He's getting raided down here. Vinchester sees him everywhere. Vinchester sees him everywhere. This is... What? Vinchester? How are you alive? How? This shouldn't be a thing. This shouldn't be a possibility. He's still getting trebs down. He's lost TCs and he's lost multiple castles to Trebs that he still has not been able to engage against. And yet he is in this game. This is a privilege to cast. But we are far from finished because it's the Incas we're talking about. And they can just produce so much freaking army. Now, what Mihai chose to do earlier with the Villa deletion, maybe it was too extreme. Maybe he needed to stay at like 120, 130. I don't know. It's kind of tricky, but the light cav are here, and the light cav will go for these trebs that are slightly unprotected, and some of these trebs will finally go down. Mihai will not be able to make more trebuchets if he loses these trebs right now, and Vinchester's going to take every single trebuchet, and now, if, if, I mean, I say now, you know, you can't do much if you're, if you're Mihai, and he's also raiding over here, but now it will become very difficult for Mihai to force the engagements, because Vinchester using his mobility can decide when to take these fights. He doesn't have to run in towards Trebs anymore. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now the Trebs, I see people are like, criminal! That's such a commentator comment. It was criminal to lose those Trebs. All right, let's calm down with criminal. He was right, he was right here. He was right next to it. He was, he's doing a million other things. Credit to Vinchester for finding the moment, but you're absolutely right. Those Trebs need to stay alive, and Vinchester taking the score lead. Vinchester has a massive pop lead. We've got Trebs from Vinch now that he will definitely protect. And, I mean, Mihai 
was I was so far ahead in Castle Age. And then so far ahead in Imp. I honestly thought Imp would have broken Vinch here. Just crazy stuff. And Vinch is like kind of saving this stone for later. So we can take this again soon. He will definitely trap down this castle. Vinchester's still finding more raids in the back. He has these stables occasionally sending more light cap to raid this area. Just crazy, man. I can't believe we're seeing this. And yeah, like, skirms are cheap for Incas. But the light cap are going to be out for the skirms. And there's actually not many defensive castles right now for Mihai. He's got like two, but this is a defensive castle towards the middle. We have a pause. I mean, this is a best of seven. These guys are going to need breaks between the games. What are we witnessing here? Also, isn't it crazy? It's like right when Mihai's pop goes down, he's, he queues up his army and he's got a whole lot more again. Pretty wild. But I, it does feel like a lot of the army's not together anymore. Like he's producing from a bunch of different areas, I'm sure. But it doesn't feel like he can easily find the engagements he wants. By the way, Vinchester just focused down a monk here. He must be having some lag issues today. But he just killed that monk with a random light cap. Like, how do you pay attention to that? Also, still found kills over here. It's not easy to kill Incan villagers because of all that armor they have. But it's happened. I think maybe the, sta the stable's going to end up going down. But here comes Hussar and Cav Archer through the middle. And we have a castle here from Vinch. Now, this is clearly a castle just to protect his traps, right? He wants to take this away from Mihai. What a crazy game. So, Vinch will have more castles soon. Because Vinchester has found that stone again, like we just saw. So, he can set up his castles where he needs to. He'll have three of them. The trebs are on the way. Ooh, that's a lot of skirmishers. That is, that is a ton of skirmishers. Uh... Oh, God. I mean, I feel like you kind of just have to take the fight, and you hope that you clear out... Yeah, I actually love the fact he garrisons with his vills here, too. You hope you clear out the halbs. The Incas are insane. Mihai is not finished. Mihai is not going to allow this castle to go down too, too easily. But the castle from Vinchester was key, right? Without that castle, Mihai can continue to engage. You still need to try and find some raids if you can, if you're Mihai, to hit Vinch's economy. He's done a nice job to recover his own economy here. He's going to get relic number one eventually. And relic number two, actually. He does have a monk in queue, so that'll be some gold income for him. Vinch, not quitting with the raids. will still keep attempting them. I also see this monk is going to snag that relic, so that will be three for him. And we have Timurid Siegecraft, which gives you extra range on your trebs for the Tatars here. And he already got Siege Engineers. So I think he's going to have 19 range trebs here. Am I... No, it was a 20. I think it's plus 2 range on top of 17. So 19? I forget. It's funny. This tech also unlocks Flaming Camels. Which no one's ever going to want against the Incas. But yeah. 16 plus 3. And that treb range can be really helpful actually. Because the opponent's trebs have to move so much further forward. Like a bit further forward to hit your own trebs. Um... There's not any stone left on the map right now. So, at least for Mihai. So, Mihai can't repair forever. He also doesn't have the gold income where he wants to buy too much stone. But Vinchester's got to repair his trebs. We have hoardings coming in. Such a good tech to keep these ca this castle up. Add ex extra HP to that castle. But it's a massive engagement. It's 190 pop from both. And maybe the best Arabia game we've seen the entire qualifier to start the first decider to see who makes it into the main event of Hidden Cup. If you see Tremendous Arabia play, an Undying Spirit, Vinch, or Mihai confirmed. <laughs> and also, like, all the other players who will be in the main event, let's be honest, but only one player gets to qualify today. And the Hussars now from Vinchester finding their targets, finding the Trebs. Again, it is more awkward for the Trebs for Mihai to hit these Trebs because they don't have the range. So they have to move into more exposed positions. Skirmishers are pushed forward to try and kill the Cav Archers. But guys, look how many Skirmishers have to die to kill the Cav Archers. And Mihai is falling apart. Is he finally going to be broken? He's got 30 units in queue. That's the crazy thing. He's buying more stone. It's just going to be pure Halb Skirm from him. Vinch repairing away. What a battle. This is crazy. Look how many units Mihai has all the time. 
He me the, the fights in this game have not been good for Mihai. Oh, Finchester! His trebs glitched out! They stopped firing! I mean, maybe this is intentional. But he backs away for the time being, maybe thinking he's going to lose his trebs and then he needs a little bit more patience. What a crazy moment. They do have random units still going for some raids. Vinchester's very exposed here on wood, I'm noticing. Like, his wood could be an issue for him. Actually, it could be an issue for Mihai, too. Like, Mihai's trees are also over here, and Vinchester sees that. Vinchester has more buildings down here. He's sending some Hussars this way and some Hussars this way while still microing the main battle. And he simply repositioned his trebs, guys. That's all it was. Meaning Mihai's out of position. Waited just a moment for it as Mihai focused on other things. And I think Vinch is going to take this game. Vinch has more gold income because of the relics. And I know it's slight, but he does have it. He's got Hussar Spam, which can raid Mihai at any point in time. And this castle for Mihai, I mean, I was assuming it's going to go down. It is going to be very close. He doesn't have the resources to buy anymore. The castle will fall. And there it goes. Again, Vinchester's killed 130 Vils. I expect that number to rise because villagers will be exposed here for Mihai. Villagers are exposed here. The monk actually died, so he's not going to get that relic either. And I am still as speechless as one can be when he has to talk about the game. Unbelievable performance. Like, just... Sh uh, it doesn't feel like this performance should have been possible. And... Vinchester's got to be feeling so good about himself with this win. He's going to snack what's left of this gold here. It's only 90 gold. <laughs> um, which is kind of funny. Now, Mihai will obviously continue on because his population's good. He has very cheap units, so he can make more skirms and make more halves. But he needs eco for that. And his eco is not as good as Vinchester's now. And Mihai ran up the hill with everything. Tar is sitting on top of the hill doing that extra damage. And now the population for Mihai drops. Again, we said there's a lot of exposed eco around. I think Finch just needs to find that. And once he finds that, that could be the end. I hope Mihai doesn't feel as though he's been completely outclassed here. Because, like, like as a player, you will know that you had a lead. And you will know that you had windows. And you're used to getting wins in those windows. And so I I hope, you know, you have to have a short memory, and I hope you can just kind of be like, listen, we took an elite player to imp. We can win this series. It's all good. You know, you, you got to have faith in the rest of your strategy. And to get this far, these guys are at a level where they're not going to get completely overwhelmed and emotionally broken just because of one loss. But, I mean, still. The, what Vinchester has done here is ridiculous. And the GG is going to have to be called here shortly. Vinchester is raiding all the wood lines. Vinchester has just seen it all in this game. I mean, seriously, though, if you look at his vision, where has Vinchester not been? The very back corner of the map. Everything else has been seen. Everything else is seen. Vinchester is the all-seeing eye, and the GG is called. Vinchester takes the first game. Vinchester wants badly to be back in Hidden Cup 5 main event. What a player. And what a fight. That was a an amazing Arabia game. <laughs> that was just insane. I mean, it's one thing what Vinchester did with some of the micro moments here. I've seen our viewer count go up. So viewers, I encourage you to go back to when Mihai had the Siege Workshop. Because Vinch's micro in some of those moments was just unbelievable. Okay? But even still, even though all that happened, it was... The Elite Eagle timing from Mihai, that Elite Eagle Treb timing was so good and usually kills people. And Vinchester's Heavy Cav Archers actually were the key in this game. These Heavy Cav Archers, these 26 of them, had 122 kills. And obviously many of them died. And then Vinch, his vision eventually paid off from the different areas of the map. He was very well aware of where Mihai was. Honestly, I think what gave Mihai such a good chance was the escape artist here that had the TC in the barracks because Vinch didn't know about that for some time. And Vinch knew about everything else. But, uh, wow, just a crazy game. Um, there's the KD for you. you. You saw that throughout the game, I'm sure. And then there's the economy side of things. Vinchester with 52,000 food that game, and then he had 5,700 stone. A, a crazy start to the series. This best of seven is to make it into the main event of Hidden Cup. 
And, uh, well, I can't be more excited to bring these games to you guys today. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. All right, so Vinchester took the first game. And, man, was it a banger. If you missed it, definitely need to go back. Oh, also, we're going to add. Hold on. Did you guys know this is Hidden Cup? Boom! Hidden Cup 5 qualifiers logo. Forgot about that one. So, Vinchester won the first game. And it was an unbelievable performance. It was on a map that was very open, though, right? And Quarry, while it's not a closed map, you do have to work to close it up. It is a little bit more one-dimensional. And when Mihai played this map last, he won with the Bengalis, and he won with some great economy. So, Mihai here is hoping to simplify the game and probably take it late because Bengalis are one of the best late-game civilizations. Now, actually, the Vietnamese are also one of the best late-game civilizations. And I have not seen the Imperial Skirmisher, let's say, up against the Bengali Elephant Archer. So I'm not actually sure how that would go. But uh, in the, the other time we saw this from Mihai, he was against the Malay, and it went late game. And that was really the goal. It's just Bengali Elephant Archers just kind of kill everything. Like, even skirms, right? Like, it was like 80 skirms for, uh, for Margugu in that game. And Mihai had 40 Elephant Archers, and the Elephant Archers were just shrugging it off like it was nothing. So... Yeah, I'm just curious to see if Vinchester wants to take any type of control here in Feudal. For now, the players are pushing the many deer from the middle towards the TC. And we did make a change to this map. We just eliminated some of these small wood lines because it was occasionally giving us some issues with generating resources. So you have a little less wood near the TC now, but obviously there's wood around the edge. And then you can go here and then... Chop these trees if you wish to. That is very rare. Someone said, I know pig. Did someone shoot the boar with the TC? <gasps> oh, God. I thought Vinchester was going to lose that villager there. Mihai is taking the boar. And then he's got this boar, too. You're, you're good, guys. You're good. Don't T90 blind me. This boar is good. They weaken the boar with the TC. You probably know this. Maybe it looked like he shot the boar with the TC. He's fine. Everything's good. Schwartz says, T90, have there been quarry games where players cut through the woods on the side? Uh, I think there's been two. But, like, even if this was open, I don't think we would see that be as heavily prioritized for aggression because you still, there's a choke point behind it, which can just be walled, and it can be awkward, and there's no gold, right? So, I think the, the middle is always the focus, but I do recall two games in the qualifier where we had the... Uh, the side get cut. So we'll see. Uh, main event, you know, might be some temptation to try and change that. Like maybe 50 wood on these trees. Maybe it could happen a little bit earlier. But it is meant to be designed as kind of a, a closed, focused through the middle type map. Because we don't have a map like Arena, for example. Right? But yeah, um, thank you everyone for the, for the subs and support today. The sub count's climbing up. It's really motivating to see that. Really appreciate it. If you're watching on Twitch, obviously you can support with with the free Prime if you have Amazon Prime. Connect it to your brother, sister, cousin, neighbor's Prime account if they don't watch Twitch or whatever. That obviously means if you're watching on YouTube right now as well, you, you could in theory do that as well, but you might be comfortable there. And that's all good. But uh yeah, we'll add emotes for the for the people who are subbed. We'll have a lot of emotes for the main event, and we had some more perks coming with that, but thank you everybody. Vinchester going for a barracks and going for feudal age. And then we have Mihai doing exactly what he did against Margugu. And he is going for the three militia. Now, guys, Vinchester hasn't scouted this. You know where the opponent's TC is going to be, both because of the Vietnamese and the map. Vinchester does not have vision on this yet. Or did he catch vision on it? These are, these are pre-walls that you're just doing to play safe. Because there could be pressure. <gasps> this freaking guy, dude. This freaking guy. He traps the scout. And he protects his villagers. Vinchester says, hey, sorry, buddy. But hope you enjoyed your stay. Kills the villager. Gets the militia out. What a play from Vinchester. And now Mihai, he will find no damage from this. And also, he's got army coming forward here from Vinchester that can do damage to him. What a play there from Vinchester yet again. Beautiful quick walls. And now he's not going to have just two militia 
is going to be... Well, no, it is just going to be two Militia. Sorry. It's going to be two Militia, the Scout, into some army behind this, most likely. Dang. Like, again, it's just another instance where... If that goes slightly differently, Mihai gets rewarded and kills a lot of eco. It was the same thing at the start of the previous game. And now Mihai's got to get his quick walls down, and he does the same. And he says, I can do it too. Impressive stuff. Finchester's just going to sit here, attack that wall for now. And he will add an archer range. He actually misclicks here. That was a shift cue back to the tree, but he didn't hold shift for a second. There you go. And seems like it'll be fairly passive opening here, guys. I think it's going to be a skirmisher follow-up. But Mihai, knowing the army is here, is actually walling. This is really smart, actually, because the downside for you is that Vinchester can make army to follow this up with. But if you wall this, the army can't get through. And that seems like that's what's going to happen here. Vinchester could kill a vill. That starting scout is so valuable to this to block an attack. But, yeah, nice shot from Mihai. Mihai will have a two-villager lead because the Megalis get two villagers out of the TC. The militia are still here. And Skirmisher will take some time to kill them, so... I think overall, Mihai is going to be pretty happy with this situation. He will feel a little... It never feels great to not have a scout, but still... I think he'll feel somewhat okay. He is even over here on gold. Fat Man's Poop. First message here. Says, watching on YouTube, I came to Twitch just to drop the prime. Well, Fat Man's Poop, we are very happy that you came to Twitch instead of staying on YouTube. That was a uh, quite a name there, my friend. But uh, hey, the prime still does support me. So um, it's just another instance where I am a little ashamed of my job. But, uh, but thank you. Silver Dog, what's up? There will be no community games later. Oh, Scout goes down. The Spearman does his job. So, okay. So, both players don't have a Scout. Now, I don't want to get your hopes up or anything. Because I know there's a lot of Choppas in chat. But if there was ever a time to consider chopping through the side wood, it would probably be in an instance where players didn't have their Scout. Now... You don't want to chop through to counterattack with skirms. <laughs> and you don't want to chop through if you're the archer player to attack a guy who has skirms. So that's like two very strong reasons why we're probably not going to see what I just suggested. But I'm just saying the players are a little bit blind right now. Not having any vision or anything. Has anyone ever chopped through the sidewoods in the qualifier yet? Yes. Yes, it did happen. It happened like twice, which I, I noted earlier. But again, shouldn't play a big role. Um, Man, what else to talk about as things slow down here? I mean, this is basically whose militia can survive the longest. Looks like Vinchester's militia are going through. Uh, talk to me about this, guys. Who wins? Full Imp Skirm or full uh, Bengali Elephant Archers? I, I think Imp Skirm should, do, should be great there. Right? Uh, elephants, though, are still so strong. Now, if it's equal numbers, if it's like 30 elephants against 30 skirms, uh, God, Vinch is nerding out so hard right now. <laughs> if it's 30 elephants against 30 skirms, I think the elephants win. But I guess it just comes back to cost effectiveness at the end of the day. These skirms. They're trying so bad to hit the archer. The militia doesn't want to die. Save me, he says. Oh. He goes down. Painful, painful, painful stuff. I would like to see a siege opening here in the next stage from, from maybe both of them, right? They both shown range units. Wow, Vinchester's going to stone. This is different. He might be planning for a castle, but... Yeah, they both shown range units. <clears throat> I know, like, the tendency for Miha here, what he did in the previous round, is just to drop TCs right away. And that's really good, too. But uh, you could be somewhat vulnerable still on the front if Siege Push comes through. We'll see. Kavetti, thank you for the new sub. Thank you, Mick, for the new sub. Means a lot, guys. Uh, also, there were gifted subs on the YouTube side. And a couple people who subbed there. It really just comes down to preference, by the way. Like, I won't be streaming as consistently long-term on YouTube as I do on Twitch. Twitch is still my main platform. But for big events, I will multi-stream it to YouTube. Um... 
I mean, I, that may also change. Like, in the event that there's a lot of people who would watch consistently on YouTube, maybe I'd change that. But I have my concerns about doing it for every stream. Either way, though, whichever platform you do sub on, it's a 70-30 split. Platform obviously gets some, but then I get majority of it, which means a lot, so... Wow, Vinch going to stone. You know what this is, guys? This is a immediate crazy boom. He's going to stone to get to 300 stone so he can build a second, the third, and then the fourth TC. That's my prediction. I do not think this is for a castle. He would have more on stone for a castle. His eco should be really smooth here, and he might believe that he has the better late game. Now, Mihai, in the, again, just referencing it for those that watched Margugu against Mihai, he did the same thing. He went for uh, Militia into range, into a stable, and the stable cleared up the skirms or any monks that came out. Margugu just, he just fell for it so bad. He just got completely baited and was going heavy monks. And the light cap killed the monks. But there will not be monks here from Vinchester. And Vinchester should have seen those games. And he should know. Hmm. Lover of Peace is 70-30. is pretty ridiculous given how big of a streamer you are. I'd expect more like 80-20 or 85-15. Well, that's not how the, the industry works. <laughs> but thank you. I think I actually think 70-30 is really reasonable. I didn't have 70-30 on Twitch again until this month. It was actually 50-50 for the first three months when I returned, and we had to earn it by having enough like consistent support. So I think it's really bad to have 50-50 splits for subs for anyone out there who has that. It's unfair in my opinion, but Twitch kind of has control. And this is the place a lot of people want to be. This Wow, we call it. Look at Vinch. Interesting. So Vietnamese eco upgrades being cheaper, but also researching faster. He kind of went for everything. He went for stone. He went for gold. And then boom, boom, boom. He is going to boom. And he does lose the skirms. And now he is going to be on the defensive. And it is double monastery towards the middle here. Now, did Vinch get a get a, a, some vision on this? He did. So he got a vision on the first mon. Got a vision. What am I talking about? Got a vision. Great English here. Um, he 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 saw this. And he doesn't know about the second monastery. He doesn't know about the siege workshop. Really like the decision here from Mihai. Because he can tell Vinch is just giving a map control. I really like the decision to be aggressive. This is going to make it difficult. I don't think Vinchester's preparing for anything beyond just the light cap here. He actually even canceled the cab archers. So, if these light cap get in, they might actually not be able to raid all that easily, but it'll still be annoying. And then the siege obviously could start to pressure these buildings. And then also you get the relics right now if you're Mihai. And he already had two villagers from Feudal Age that popped out of those t that TC for free. Then he got two more when he made it to Castle. So sure, you're a bit delayed on the TCs, but you already have more vills. And now there's Siege, and Vinchester hasn't even been on gold. Like, Vinchester is full wood and food eco and stone eco. They'd be planning for a defensive castle. Really impressed how Mihai, who's known as an open map player, has been able to play these maps other than Arabia. Obviously, game one, he played phenomenally well and ended up losing. But I just think it's something like... I've been around for a decade now, and there's just so many players who play ladder Arabia, and they never advance, they never grow, they never get better in tournaments. And clearly, the practice has been there. And on the mixed settings, he's very comfortable playing like this, for example. Again, the light cap get through. It's just going to be annoying. Vinchester's going to research light cap as well. But now, Mihai will know his opponent's going for light cap. Nice quick walls here from Vinch. And we'll see what he does. He's going to get armor right now. Maybe he'll just make more light cap. But Vinch is going crazy. Wow. Vinch is going to go three stables. But guys, Vinchester is 4TC booming, right? And 4TC booming, that's pretty much all you can do, right? His resources are at the limit. So now, if you need light cap as well... You will not be able to produce out of these TCs. Watch his idle TC time. It will rise greatly here. And then also, Bengali monks, they're pretty strong, right? So you might actually be able to keep most of these monks alive against Light Cap. I think Vinch is in big trouble. I think Mihai is in a perfect position now. And again, I don't think he actually needs to win the game here in Castle. I think that 
if he's able to relax and micro everything at the same time and drop the third and fourth town center at home, I think he can still go for that. But he's actually shifting the stone, so he wants a castle at some point. So cool. Reverend says, this narrative that Vinch is part of the OG group of players is jarring to me. Reverend, I was casting Vinchester in 2014, dude. All right. No, that's not true. Sorry, 2015. All right. That's nine years ago. I know that saying 2015 was nine years ago is going to make us all feel old. I get that. Right? But Vinch has been around a long time. <laughs> He's been around a very long time. I have very vivid memories of him microing plumed archers against scorpions. <laughs> Oh, man. Vinchester, Vinchester, Vinchester. Boom! Nice job. How many light cap does he have? He's seven. Now, he's idling all his town centers to get this number of light cap, but it is clearly the right play because he is under a lot of pressure. And again, my thinking was Mihai is doing everything right. He's mixing in the spears. He has the light cap. He has the monks. He has seen the stables. You know your opponent's going to hop out soon. Actually is going to convert the buildings now with redemption, which may mean that Vinchester will be inclined to take a fight sooner rather than later. Siege pops out of the darkness here from Vinch, but he knows it could be converted, so he has to be careful. He goes in with the light cav. He loses his siege. The light cav are here. They can kill all the monks, but there's so much happening. There's so much in here. There's monks, there's spears, there's pikes now, there's siege, but wait a second. Vinchester, he clears the monks. He's going to clear most of the siege, but there's still pikemen. There's still more army here from Mihai. And Mihai gets just enough army there. Again, is still just two town centers behind this, but it has been very smooth. Just 42 seconds of TC idle time. Dang, man. Now, the light calf from Vinch, they're going to sneak around. This is really smart because this engagement is going to be the obvious one. So he's now trying to pick off the reinforcements, and he's going to find them. Hi. Mihai loses two monks just like that. Also was bringing villagers, and oh man, Mihai. Hmm. So now he has to think, because you never want to sit there, and Vinchester runs over here to try and convert, the, uh, kill the siege. You never want to sit there with enough stone to build a castle and not build it. So he may shift his whole game plan entirely, because a defensive castle doesn't feel too good maybe he drops a third town center or something but that this move from vinch is so good and now he's gonna run through we're on a new patch with the pathing and the, and, and the grouping should be better it seemed like that's what vinchester wanted he wanted to clear out the monks so his own siege can do something here and he doesn't have his own siege yet like have doing the same thing they were before looking for units we'll see the villagers runs right into pikemen though vinchester realizes we have a moonwalking light cav we now have house walls from mihai we've got the barracks still here with pikemen and vinchester needs his own castle oh ah! oh god he almost lost it he's got to be super careful this is this could be really bad villagers are running forward now there's still random like have around vinchester needs to get this castle that and what oh See, when I try that, there's a very different result for my villagers. Vinchester loses one vill, he takes out the siege, and now Mihai's got to back away. And what a great job from Vinchester to defend that. <laughs> and suddenly, Pikeman's actually not that big of a concern now that you've got a castle to make some archers. I thought he was going to lose that castle there. Now, Mihai. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mihai's going to drop a castle. Vinchester says, great idea. I want one too. Or another one. And uh, he's going to drop it there. Okay, well, you've got to go Imp. Imp has to be the number one thing you think about in this situation then. And look at Mihai. Up. Wow. Such a sick job from him. Immediate. And he'll know about this castle too. Now, Vinch's castle will go up. The pikes are now out of position for Mihai. So, Imp is the right thing, but it's been a messy game. And he's taken some losses that could have maybe been avoided. Vinchester's still deep in Castle Age, though. Vinchester might need to go Rams for this, guys. If he could go all in light cap with Rams, maybe that's his chance. But then again, there's still pikemen out there. I don't know. Vinchester's done a great job with the counterattacks. On a map that's not too easy to do that with. Or to do that on. 
but with Imp on the way from Mihai, Mihai should be able to make Trebs to take down both these castles. And these are Vietnamese castles. Vietnamese castles are not known for their strength. I don't know if they're the weakest castles in the game, but they're certainly bottom three. And somehow these like have actually got through. Mihai thought he could be cute and delete that wall and, and have pikemen to deal with this. And now Vinchester is just going to nerd out with these light cap for the next hour. So, well, Mihai, that, that was that was ill-advised. I think Mihai is in the better position, though. The vil count's still going to be close. He should be able to make another castle. So, we'll have uh, two castles, probably against zero. And the gold is so valuable. This positioning is so awkward, right? I also like the vision for Mihai. Mihai made some houses here, just so he can see. The archer's still here, too, that Vinchester's not coming through. Vinchester's like have killed even more villagers. Vinch's Imperial Age TC is the TC on the back, but he will be castleless. And if you are castleless on a choke point map, how are you expected to run through the middle here? I just don't see a way. Vinch has found amazing value. But Mihai's initial strategy, that, that push, was so good. To have that push, and then also have the imp time, is so good. Mihai does have loom. There's no concerns there. <laughs> that would be awkward if he went forward without loom. He's getting more monk upgrades, which is what the Bengalis are good at. 12 range on the monks now, so siege should be converted from distance. Obviously, that excludes Trebs. Trebs cannot be converted. Vinchester kills another villager. He's going to maybe attack the farm. Nope, he's going for more vills. Okay, he's still moving. Pikeman chase. Mihai's like, I'll happily lose a couple more vills. He'd probably make a deal. I'll delete five vills for you if you just delete the light cap. Like, this is so annoying. Uh-oh, Pikeman running into the castle fire. That's a little sloppy. But... That aside, we, ha we will have four trebs before from Mihai before Vinchester even has one. Vinchester just now dropping a university in the back, maybe for chemistry. And oh my god, dude! Vinchester, quit it! Quit it! Uh, sorry, I'm speaking for Mihai right now. I am Mihai's spokesman. You are so freaking annoying! But it's so impressive. And look how many villagers, man. I wish I could tell you what that group killed. That like have there. There's two like have. Apparently, it contributed to 11 villager kills. Guys, if Vinchester stays alive, if he wins this game, we will think back to those like have and the value that they brought him. So good. So impressive. He does have a villager lead over the Bengalis, which is rare. Vinchester repairing his own castle. He will have two trebs here. Soon to be three, soon to be four. He's going to make more like have. What he would really need is some range as well for the pikemen. He's going to work on that. He does have Bracer. Now, he will lose his castle, but Mihai could lose his castle as well. Oh, man. Vinch could be so housed as well. He's got so many production buildings, so many houses around here. It's also kind of funny that Mihai is researching blacksmith upgrades, and the blacksmith he converted from Vinchester. Guys, there's no room to run. There's no room to hide on Quarry. You are just stuck. And so Vinch doesn't really have the time. If he had more ranged units to maybe snipe these pikes, then the light cap could maybe deal with the monks. But it's the timing of this pressure. And it's the positioning of the pressure here from Mihai that is giving him a chance to tie up this series. That's six treps. Oh, man, that's a lot of treps. I love that. I've noticed that Mihai loves to, to make a healthy amount of trebuchets. He did the same in the first game. I think it's smart. I think it's underrated. We could have bombard cannons out eventually from Vinch, but even that I'm not that excited about for him. Again, there's monks out there to convert those. TCs are going to still keep going down. Vinchester having to be patient. Behind this, Vinchester massing a whole bunch of Lycav. How can you be this patient? when your entire base is being trapped. But he knows he has to be patient. Because if he is not, he will take a bad fight, lose the fight, lose the game. More upgrades coming in. He's got Arbalest. Like, he's on Arbalest? How is he on Arbalest? <laughs> 
And now we see range is behind this from Mihai, who's maybe thinking the same. And he wants to go for skirms. I think the Trebs have accomplished enough. I think, honestly, at this point, you could still keep trebbing down all this, maybe. But the Trebs have accomplished enough. You don't need to extend too much further beyond your castle. Now, Mihai's going to see the like have here. And, oh, 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 that could be really bad. We know what happened with the other light calf. Mihai, please close that gap. If Finchester gets through, you're going to have a nightmare. Oh, God, the, the halves have been pulled out of position. The halves are out of position. The light calf swoop in. These are Bengali monks, but the light calf are there to kill them. And if the monks are out of the picture, it could be Arbales that dominates the day. And yeah, well, that's pretty much what it is expected. It was very hype, and yet we were rem rem reminded how strong Bengali monks are, and Mihai is completely fine. He continues to trap things down. He converted the light calf, so he's killing villagers. We're not finished, though, because the Arbalest and the rats and archers can move out. He will go in. He will snipe the monks. And hold on, guys. Vinchester can do this. He's sniping the monks, and once the monks are out of the picture, it's pretty much only how this out. It is, it is definitely an at-what-cost situation. He did lose a lot, but the monks, that was over a thousand gold. And man, Vinchester again is somehow alive in a game where it feels like it shouldn't have been possible. Is he behind? Absolutely. Was he behind multiple in multiple instances in game number one though? Yes, he was. And now the skirms are coming in from Mihai. So with these all-in pushes, right? You you sometimes don't have the timings to switch into other things. But Mihai's economy is in a better spot now, so that is something that he can do. Now, Vinch is not trying to open it up, which is interesting. I do feel at this stage, building a, a tower here in a lumber camp could make it not, like messy. But maybe he doesn't want that, actually. A lot of his eco has been found. Most of his like have, have died. Most of his farming eco has been trapped down. And still feels like Mihai is going to be completely fine because he has halves to protect his trebs. He has skirms. But if he loses this castle, maybe that's the start of something bad for him. So he needs to keep it up. And Vinchester, he's, he's taking an engagement that I feel he feels he has to win or this game is over. He's just so completely outpopped. He's outpopped with military. He's outpopped with eco. Mihai's eco has been untouched this whole time. The Bombard Cannon. That's normally something that can swing Trebors. It gets converted! Of course it does. The monks, man. The power of the Bengali eco, the monks, and just their trash. We talked about elephants, but just the trash units, the, the counter units here for me has been perfect play. His castle will stay up. Vinchester's strebs will go down. And we have ourselves a 1-1 here in what has been a great series. The Bengalis, I mean, I covered the entire qualifier, right? And the Bengalis were not picked frequently at all. They weren't banned frequently either. No one was really playing the Bengalis here. We saw a lot of, like, Malay, maybe some Britons, uh, maybe some, uh, what else comes to mind? Like, humans. Um, I remember Aztecs. But Mihai played Bengalis last week against Margugu. And now he's done it here, and it looks really, really strong. And, and, and what I love about this is that in Mihai's game plan against Margugu the prior week, he went full boom. And I think Vinchester expected that because Vinchester went full boom. But Mihai didn't boom. He went for an attack and he gained so much control over the map. And ultimately that led to him having this position in Imp. Mihai, after almost winning the first game and maybe being heartbroken he didn't, he shows that there's no heartbreak at all. He wins the game. Well played. Great, really good wooden gold control. And really just good timings on those attacks. It was the the forward castle fast imp play from him that ultimately won him this game, in my opinion. Did have to work really hard to get his eco set behind. This is a, a complete player here, Mihai. Right? And um, he's shown it. Five more games, hopefully, maybe, possibly. We'll see. So, Mihai has gone for the Saracens. Interesting pick here. But this is a map that we're typically seeing a lot of stable units and Vinchester's doing the Dragon Star build. Okay, so there was a build that was labbed out. And I have to credit Dragon Star for this, okay? So Dragon Star had lost in his round against Dark 3-2. And uh, if you watch those games, you will have felt like maybe Dragon Star would have won that one. 
on this map. Um, he, he lost the game. But basically, Dragonstar told me. He said, I labbed it out. And the five uh, straggler trees here is just enough wood to give you the resources to go dock, to fishing ship, house, house, and then a lumber camp. <laughs> so, if that is true, because I didn't really check it or do the math, uh, I think you can only do it with Persians as well, because you get plus 50 wood at the start. Um, if the math is correct, he will be able to make a lumber camp, and then he won't have a lot of wood remaining. Um, right now, there's 50 wood. <laughs> This is so crazy. Yeah, look, look. He's got he's got 40 wood left. He needs a little bit more wood to go over for the lumber camp. So here's my thing, though. It's like these fishing ships are going to collect, what, 300 food? And your villagers could have collected it anyways. And then you feel obligated to add fish traps for these really early. So, like, I appreciate it because you have additional eco units, right? Which is the idea of adding fishing ships. And I also love the fact that, like, this is so specific, right? And there's not many trees left anymore. There's 17 wood remaining when he goes for the lumber camp. But I am not so certain that this is actually better. But it is unique. And it, maybe, he, maybe he wants his eco to be safe. So I just think... I... I'm just going to say, I think it's interesting. I think it's really cool. And I think everyone should salute Dragonstar and now Vinchester for going for something unique. Let's see if it's actually better. It's pretty cool that that was tested, though. I've had some conversations with other players about it, and, and other players seem to think they're not too short either. Now, obviously, you can dock this terrain. This is the first time that I'm casting someone do it. This is the second time in the whole qualifier we've seen this. But the middle... Uh, lots of docks can come up later on in the game. And uh, normally you're going to see that lead to a lot of demos head towards the wood line. So I think the players need to make sure they wall up. Now, Saracen galleys do fire faster. So if this becomes like a galley war, Saracen should be really strong. But it seems like ships are not something people invest into until after a lot of land army. We'll see how it goes. Thank you, Poseidon, very much. Nostradamus, welcome. Says, first time in my life on Twitch. Just because of T90, good job T90. Yo, welcome, Nostradamus. I know you predicted this many years ago. Alder Dash, welcome. Thank you. Yes, this map has produced some epic games. People have really enjoyed it. And we should have a barracks and a stable coming up for both players. I would be very surprised if we don't see that. Ooh, wow, Mihai was setting up a trap there. If the scout went through, he would have gone house, house, and trapped the scout. But Finchester says, not today. I'm really excited with the level we're seeing here from both of them. Like, Vinch, he was just so... He was just the class above the players that he ran into in the previous round. So it was hard for me to know... Sometimes you don't know if a player is bringing their elite level until they're up against another elite level player. And Mihai, on the other side of things, there's been no sign uh, of shakiness. He, he's playing amazing right now. So he's locked in, which is exactly what we wanted here. Res collected difference is there. But let's just wait and see once these fishing ships are idle. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, if your fishing ships are idle and you already feel like you benefited from them, it could still just end up being kind of okay but you feel like you never want a, anything to be idle so he can't farm yet is he on a fish trap already i don't think that's a fish trap right there's no fish trap there he didn't make a mill now he's made a mill you see what i mean now now it's like how do i spend my wood here so far though res collect is looking really smooth this is persian's first pick though I think Persians have been first picked a lot. Their win rate hasn't been too good, but it is a sieve that people think are strong. I think regardless of the strategy. And maybe Japanese could try the same strategy. We'll see. Maybe this becomes meta. Guys, if Vinchester makes main event and we see this strategy on Mudflow, what do we say? Vinch confirmed. But obviously, there's seven players who are already in the main event who are going to be watching this. 
uh, and, you know, maybe thinking that it's a good idea. There's a practice period. Then we're going to have everyone else who qualifies who's maybe watching this. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's hard to, to really say with certainty. I'm still curious, though. Fish traps? I can't actually see them. They look like they're on a fish trap, right? How would he have the wood for that? I think they're idle right now. Archer opening here for Mihai. That's not what I expected. But he's he's played very well so far to defend himself. The wood line's protected. Spears were out. He also added the market which early with the Saracens. Actually does make sense to maybe use the market early with the Saracens. But he's got an archer opening without being on gold, which is a bit different. And now we see a tower here. And wow, Vinchester. This is funny. Vinchester's dropping a tower because he saw the market and knew his opponent probably sold the stone. And now, Mihai has to buy the stone back. And of course, this is not what you want with the market. You, you want your eco to flow a lot differently than this. You don't want to be buying resources back just to protect a wood line. But hey, it's what he's doing. He's building this tower. This could be really messy for him. He almost opened up the gate. Oh god, villagers could die here. Mihai's pulled some of these weak ones away, though. He's done a good job at that, and I think the tower will go up. It's just, will he lose a vill? Beautiful micro from Mihai. He loses just one vill. Could have been worse. Still is not a fun situation economically for him. And a good start here for Vinchester. I loved how Vinchester saw... Oh, God. That villager's exposed, too. I love how Vinchester saw the market and immediately knew what to do. Second villager killed there by Vinchester. His wood line's exposed. He has to be very careful here. Remember, he still doesn't have many farms set up at all. So the food eco could be problematic. And Vinchester, he's got archers, he's got spears. Plus, he's got the scout to fight off here. But he killed th another villager just moments ago, maybe with the tower. And he hasn't lost anything here. And beautiful play from Vinch. Vinch is actually going to fully clear this. Wow. He hasn't lost a unit yet. Are you kidding me? He actually won't lose one. Watch this. Bam. 8-0 KD right now for Finchester. And here I was hoping that I could make a 7-1 joke. But uh, we'll, we'll save those for the Stark series when Stark... <laughs> when Stark plays. No, I'm kidding. We don't make the 7-1 jokes during a Brazilian playing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we suck. All right? That, everyone's always like, Well, what does America do? We, nothing. Nothing. It's too tempting, you know? Okay, are these on fist traps yet? I can't tell. I think they are. Okay, so they are on fist traps. Good to know. And now we've got a dock from Vinchester. Oh, man, and he's on gold, guys. Ooh, boy. Oh, we know what's coming out of that dock. Okay. Um. So the units from Mihai can still walk up onto the grass to avoid any demos. Uh, but if they leave and go back onto the amphibious terrain, there might be a sneaky demo. Vinch has played this perfectly. He's got scouts waiting. He's got skirms waiting. The dock was spotted. So if I were me, I would be concerned about this. Now, for now, with the spearmen here, the scouts can't engage. But the spearmen are weak, and Mihai realizes he needs to get out of here. And you cannot go back onto that terrain anymore, Mihai. You have to stay on the grass. And if you have to stay on the grass, it is a longer path home. And if it's a longer path home, you could just lose everything anyways. Wow, Vinch's play has been really good. A fire galley? Vinchester! I thought you were a man of the people! Fire galley! Well, I mean, fire galleys are really consistent. It's really smart because you do it, you could still use them all the whole time. But what it is not, it is not like a highlight worthy thing. It is actually, believe it or not, I think this will become more meta uh, in the main event on this map. I think we will see less demos. I think players are going to be less exposed than the qualifier. But uh, Vinchester does also queue up a demo for us, guys. 16 to 3 KD, and one of the deaths for Vinchester was a unit dying to something that wasn't me high. And we have another tower. That is really good tower. That's an amazing tower. M Mihai just doesn't feel like he can make enough army right now. He's really struggling. Anything he has moved forward with just gets found and killed. And then his eco 
is abysmal compared to Vinchester's and has been since the start, it feels like. Winchester's scouts pulled away. The fire galleys can find an area. They're just going to attack the archer range for now. And the tower goes up. And like, I think you're forced to try and buy another tower here. Maybe you have to leave. But if you leave, you go into an area that's very awkward for wood. This is, I mean, villagers are still getting hit. And it seems like Winchester, he saw the archers over here and saw them back away. And then he saw the archers here and saw them back away. So he's wondering, like, where could this guy be going? And oh my god, dude. Uh, uh, uh oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so in the darkness goes Mihai. And Vinchester has also scouted the area, so he will feel like Mihai's not here. And this could mean that Mihai gets back into the game if he gets a bunch of villager kills. But Vinchester's already been prepped to build defensive towers. And he's adding more fishing ships for more fish traps. Whoa. Oh my god, we just missed the big devil, guys! Oh, no way! Mihai's like, he's making fire galleys? What a fool! Oh! <laughs> oh, and I love how Vinchester sat it there as well. Like, he was waiting for something. And, oh, this has not been Mihai's game. He had to make more towers over here. Here come his archers, though. And the archers are going to run immediately into a tower here. Actually, guys... Hold on a second. Mihai only left the wood line because of the threat of demos. Sorry to pause, but like that's notable. He could have still killed like five more vills. There wasn't another demo in the queue, but because demos can come and because of the threat, he didn't stick around to get more kills. And that's why I think everyone should be having a dock on this map because it really affects how people play the game. And Skirms and Scouts are going to come over here from Vinch just to try and track this down. But man, what a great game from Vinchester. 22 kills. And Mihai's only killed four, which is brutal. And Mihai's eco is just abysmal, right? And his food eco is buying stuff at the market right now. This is not how you want this game to flow. Meanwhile, we've got farms for Vinchester. We've got fishing ships on fish traps. And he has just tracked every army so nicely. And the skirms are here, and Mihai yet again is probably going to be thinking, are you kidding me? Now, if Mihai had those four scouts with the archers, it, it could be a much better engagement. Because he had to wait for two more, and even these two are going to help in some ways. Okay, Vinchester, are you serious? You really want to fight that? You really want to do this with Vils? Okay, interesting decision. It certainly could have been worse for Vinchester. Again, he shows his confidence in the fights. But that's going to be a dead villager right there. Does need to leave the stone. He's making a fire galley from his starting TC area. To defend his fish, which is hilarious to me. But he is also on the way to Castle Age. And he has collected 10,300 resources against 8,600 resources collected from Mihai. Crazy difference. But also still no army right now for Vinch. And uh, this, this could be a problem. Now, obviously, he's going to make knights, and villager all survives. Um, so, knights will be very strong here, but it does feel like Vinchester should maybe add a few scouts here. I'm kind of waiting for something to arrive. He's pretty heavily on gold, does still have ships out, does still have a tower here with a lot of villagers exposed. Oh, God. Oh, God. There should be a demo on the way here. There should be a demo on the way. We Mihai knows he's behind. He's trying to get through. Vinchester's not allowing it. Beautiful house walls here from Vinchester. His tower is firing on the archers and the villagers. And uh, there's still no demo on the way, but the tower is doing everything. And Vinchester drops another house, and Vinchester will not be broken here. And still here, Vinchester with a bit of patience. Plus has the tower, so he could maybe end up clearing that up. I think Mihai sensed there's 10 villagers for me that I could kill there. If I kill, if I take that out, I can take the towers down. My wood efficiency is better. And then the eco might be better for me because I'd kill all that. And another demo goes off for Vinch. He's about to be in Castle Age. And Mihai is nowhere close. Mihai probably is not going to believe that. Still, Vinchester does have exposed units. But he's going to be on Knights now. And on Mudflow, you have to feel like the Knights are going to be able to find some really nice engagements. Eco KD is pretty much even at this point. And we see the war galley upgrade as well for Vinchester. So his ships will be even stronger now. 
And knights should dominate everything Mihai has. But he hasn't been killed yet, so he doesn't wish to call it. You know, I, I really need to know... I almost need to see this fish trap play more frequently before I can come up with a theory on if I like it or not. But right now, I'm thinking that it's worked. His res collected has always looked really good. He was able to, to have a pretty smooth economy with it. I thought there'd be more downsides. So this game looks very strong. And oh god, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a hole there. Okay, well, okay, well, best of luck to you. Uh, your towers are going to go down. There are fire ships on your villagers. And there's no fire extinguishers at this day and age. So, uh, you are... I don't think you can stop, drop, and roll your way out of this one, villagers. This is going to be very painful for you. And, uh, well, now you have no easy wood access if you're Mihai. And still stuck in the feudal age. There's also no counter damage being done, which is the pr big problem. But, it is mainly navy for Vinch. So, th th that is the positive. On, on land, you have not been killed yet, and there is an army moving forward. Actually, if this army could deny this TC right now and kill those Vils, I'd actually believe. But Vinchester's just going to go for maximum greed here. I thought there would be lots more army. But he's going to go for greed. We do have, <clears throat> excuse me, a pause. Um... But yeah, I mean, this is pretty close. It does feel like Vinchester will probably realize and Vinchester will be able to pull more villagers to finish this. I think there's some level of game sense from him to know the army could be coming and Mihai sees the TC is going to go up. Wow, what a great strat from Vinch. So just to restate some obvious things here. So main event, uh, we have seven players right now. Those are the seven invites, right? And then the qualifier over the next three days is going to determine the next nine. We've got three more sets, or sorry, three total sets today, including this one, right? So we have three sets tomorrow. And then the loser of all these sets. So whoever loses this series too, they will be facing up against other losers from the other deciders, have a second chance. And if they win that, they are still in the main event of Hidden Cup, which is the goal. They're fighting to have their identities hidden in the main event. They'll be playing on hero names. I'll show their list of heroes here in a second. And it should be a great time. Been working all the time on making that main event the best event possible. Okay, so th this is kind of rough, right? Fish traps aren't cheap. These things don't just grow on trees. And uh, losing two fish traps is kind of awkward. But Vinchester's economy is insane right now. He's gone very greedy, like I said. Like, he has not made a lot of army. And the amount of times that Vinchester's just casually taking resources next to army, and then he just casually walks away last second, is hilarious to me. I don't know how he can do it. Like, for me, I, these villagers would not have been sitting here on this stone this whole time. I would have been running. But he gets away, and <laughs> Mihai's like, mm, I need to kill those vills. Okay, there's knights here, Mihai. Go the other way. Knights are scary, right? Go the other way. <laughs> He doesn't want to. Look, he's looking. He's like, is he over here or something? <laughs> he might be looking for the villagers. But it wouldn't surprise me if he's trying to get some scouting intel and if there's a demo there. He is. He does drop a castle. He made it to Castle Age. Um, oh, no. But the worst time you need these archers upgraded. Oh, yikes. Yeah, all the archers will go down. I mean, maybe... If these were upgraded, maybe then he could still keep poking away at Vinchester and have a chance. It was always going to be tough from here. But yeah, now all the archers are dead. We might see a Mameluke, though. That's fine. That's fun. Mamelukes. Hype. Mameluke's actually really good against knights. But you do need resources for Mamelukes. And, uh, yep, Mameluke hype. Here we go. But we're going to see Vinchester actually just drop a range and go into Cav Archers. I mean, Vinchester's just been producing out all these TCs nonstop and adding eco. I mean, this is just... Even if your units are significantly worse, you should be in a really good position here if you're Vinchester. And I don't think his units are necessarily significantly worse. I actually think Cav Archer is a really nice play for the map. A really nice decision here. 
kills a couple villagers. Again, Vinchester just continues to not really care about situations many people would, would care about. I uh, run ran right underneath the castle to kill those vills. Also, I think Bodkinero is smart because it also applies to the war galleys, which he's now adding. So it, you're spending wood and gold on cab archer and wood and gold on war galleys. And it's both a ranged ship, which allows you to control the middle. Mamelukes won't be able to do too much about the ships. Winchester just scouting the additional areas here ends up finding a gold. So now he'll know his opponent is there. Wouldn't surprise me to see a castle there at some point. It's just, again, the, the eco is just not really there for Mihai compared to Vinchester. Vinchester's just completely outbooming him here. I do find it funny how he produced a galley here, though. I don't think he intended to do that. Um, Mamelukes. I mean, it seems like they're doing a decent amount of damage against ships. But it's, it's not going to be enough damage where... Even if the eco was close, you would say, hey, if you're if you're Saracens on this map and your opponent's making navy, just make Mamelukes. Mameluke counterattack, though. There we go. Vinchester apparently just waiting here with these cav archers until he needs them, because the navy is pretty much doing the rest of the job. Cav archers will need to come over here. Okay. At this point, obviously the fishing ships and fish traps don't matter as much. It doesn't play as big a role. I like how Mihai's still trying to do what he can here and kill these fist traps. He probably feels a little flexed on, to be honest. Like, I don't know if he saw Dragonstar do this in the earlier rounds. But yep, just continues to take out the fist traps. The fist traps are auto-regenerating or something here. So a lot of wood is going down for Vinchester here. But Vinchester, he kills the monk. Like we said, the second he saw this TC, I saw he was on stone. I figured he would castle this. And it is 120 eco against 67. I think Mihai's still sitting here like, kill me. Like, come on, just kill me. I think I'm dead, but you're, you're not killing me yet. I think once this castle goes up, that's the killing blow. If this castle goes up, if it goes up, will it go up? It'll go up. There's enough villagers here. The tower, counter tower doesn't do the job, and I have spoiled you because I'm a noob, and I've left fast forward on, and they had a spec delay, but don't worry. I won't do that in games that are closer. This, if anything, gives us a little bit more time to prep for the next game because I think we knew this game was going to Vinchester, and this game was just domination from Vinchester, whose most created unit was actually fire galleys. And the fire galleys worked out. The demo still worked from time to time. What a build from Vinchester. And this has been a back and forth series. Beautiful, beautiful play. That was his first pick. So that was his favorite civilization throughout the draft. And I can tell why now. Vinchester goes up to one. Probably collected more of every resource. It was that bad? No, okay. Saracen player was a bit heavier on gold. But yeah, just completely outboomed him. But what I loved there... I don't want to just skip over this just because the game wasn't that close at this stage. Was how Vinchester played the early game. Fishing ships aside, the towers, after his opponent saw stone, he saw the market. He's like, I know what you did, person here, player, opponent, enemy, right? And then he forced the opponent to buy the stone back, which is not something that Mihai wanted to do. Mihai wasn't really on gold. And then he just continued to pressure this wood line and he, he defended from every single little attack. I think he was like, had killed three or four villagers. And then by the time Mihai got over here to attack him, he cleared up the entire army. And usually that's not what happens. Normally, if your army's at their base killing vills, you're not also able to defend at the same time. Vinchester made that look very easy. Well played. Yeah, welcome everybody. Thank you. It's interesting, Vinchester's gone pack, back to, to picking his pink color as well. That's definitely something to consider in the main event when the players are playing on hero names what colors they're picking. Like, if Mihai qualifies, Mihai always plays yellow, but then Viper always plays yellow. It's it's kind of fun to have that aspect in the main event. Okay, game four, we've got islands, and folks, I think we're going to see a landing. Um, I say that right off the bat because that, in my opinion, is the weakness for the Vikings, is when games get messy and the opponents go for a landing. Vikings want to have that straight-up galley war because they are so good at it. But the last two times, and, and this is very recently, and the level's gotten much higher, um, the last two times I've seen players playing against the Vikings, 
They went for a transport ship, and they went land aggression. Make things messy for the Vikings on water. Um, now, Vinchester, his island is quite... Uh, maybe I shouldn't be talking about how long Vinchester's island is. Y you get the point, right? It is a very uh, narrow island compared to maybe the generation from Mihai here. And um, so I think that that in some ways does make it a little bit easier against the landing because it's easier to spot it. There's just less room for the villagers to uh, to move around on if the landing does happen. And it's kind of an off-center generation. So if you wanted to go for a front dock here, you might dock here. And then you might move forward, encounter the neutral islands, and be like, oh, wait. My opponent's not going to be over here. My opponent must be somewhere else. And this can happen, I'd say, about like a third or the fourth of the generations with islands. It just means the players really need to scout. Now, the old meta, right? Um, not to find yet another reason to reinforce the fact I'm, I'm getting older here, but... Um, the old meta actually, and some water maps, was actually to scout with a fishing ship. But these days, players are very resistant to that idea because they're like, no, that fishing ship is for eco. I must use this for fish. But, uh, in some instances, it might end up be worth doing so. Pro 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 it's very much not, actually. <laughs> but it's just something to think about. Because uh, I think like if you're landing, for example, it could be good to have a little bit of extra vision on where your opponent has docked. But otherwise, I think if you're going for Navy, you'll probably just end up um, finding out anyways, which is what people end up doing. So, Vinchester goes back dock. And this is like, this is a rough back dock. He is so close to the edge of the map. He doesn't have many deep fish. There is one here. But for efficiency, this is not the best. Now, back dock would indicate... He's worried about aggression, and he doesn't want to be aggressive himself. So, that that much is interesting. So, there, there may be a fast castle on the cards here from Vinch, or maybe he's expecting a landing, but yeah, he actually is missing the deep fish. Fast castle longboats would be pretty wild. We haven't seen that yet, but it is something that used to happen in other island games, and Vinchester's going to get housed really, 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 really badly. This is going to hurt him so bad. Oh god, this is this is brutal. And okay, at least he did realize. But his fishing ship can't create and his villagers can't create. Just forgot a house there, and there he goes. At least he realized right before, so it's not as bad as it could be. One of the best plays with the Italians I've always felt on islands is actually the fast castle play. Now we haven't seen that all the time, but the back dock also indicates we could have fast castle. So there's a lot of like mind games a couple guessing games as they try and think about what the other might do can anyone remember where we've seen fast castle versus fast castle on islands though we've seen feudal age versus fast castle we've seen galley opening against fire galley opening we have seen fires versus fires we've seen galleys versus galleys we've seen landing versus galleys we've seen landing versus fires I don't know if we've seen Fast Castle versus Fast Castle. I'm going to say no. But fifth fishing ship on the way for Vinch tells me he is very much going to attempt that. Or uh, cancels it. Maybe it's just like a very safe opening with galleys. Five fishing ships here for Mihai. Three going to Golds. And if he makes a mill, it is definitely Fast Castle. Yep, this is Fast Castle from him. And this is... It's so cheap for the Italians to go up to each age. So this is really nice. So far, I've also really liked that I haven't seen really bad regroups affect the players. Um, we're, it's still pretty early. I should maybe knock on wood here, but the new patch that we're playing on looks really smooth. I'm happy with that. T90 demonstrating islands is not dull. Good job, says Sir Table Flipper. Thank you. I mean, some people just don't like islands, right? But, it, but I think the variety has been there in the qualifier, and I think it's been really good. The variety of civilizations as well. It's lower than other maps because there's only so many civilizations with water bonuses. But there hasn't been, like, one clear sieve that's way better than everything, at least based on the win rate so far. I think it's been fun. Arc at Blacksmith. Okay, and the play that I recall 
Uh, Nikov and Tato started this way back in the day. Is you then go double dock forward with and make fires. And the goal is to go find your opponent's fish and kill them. Fast castle against fast castle. What in the world? Maybe a little too fast here for Mihai. Really cutting some corners. I wonder if he'll sell resources here. He actually sells some stone. This was not part of his plan. But he sells some stone just so he can get up. And he is up quick. But also, like, what can he really afford? One fire galley, a second dock. Vinch is going longboats, guys. Vinch is going longboats. What? Fast castle longboats. Let's go. Yo, that's amazing. And this is like, this is rare. We haven't seen this yet. So if Vinch makes the main event, I'm just saying, man, like the Persian build on Mudflow, the crazy micro in game number one. There's Market Blacksmith. Just the buildings he needs to go up. His fishing ships are safe on the back. He'll probably go for another dock. I am still concerned for Vinch's longboat play because you can only produce longboats when you are in Castle Age. And if the fire ships from Mihai started taking out his docks, I could see things being pretty problematic. But then again, Mihai is not going to sit around and attack a dock. He's actually going to go try and find the fish with the fires. And that's going to take some time as well. Right now, Mihai is moving out. So again, the more typical generation, it's going to be like neutral island, neutral island, enemy island. You go for any feudal age play, you can adapt a lot earlier to this. But now he sees a neutral island and he's going to run out here. He won't encounter too much and he'll have to veer to the side. Fishing ships are going long distance here in the back. He's got the other duck producing on the front. But yeah, this obviously is something that Mihai will need to figure out here. And with one ship, now two, now three, he's on the move. He's splitting up and he'll figure this out sooner rather than later. I think Finch is going to add two galleys to go try and find fish, and then the rest is going to be longboats. Vinch did not sell his stone, so Vinchester will be able to drop TCs right away. And this is exactly what Mihai wanted to find. <gasps> just passing! Oh man, he wasn't patrolling there, and he just passed them. Those fishing ships might actually survive now. Maybe Mihai noticed? And he's going to find it here. You have to assume this is a patrol now. Because he didn't know where his opponent was. Now he knows his opponent can be near. He's going to patrol. Okay. So that other fire galley just wanted to spread the love. And the fishing ships get killed anyways. Yeah, so now you've killed some fishing ships. You find the docks. And now longboats are going to come out, certainly. Yep, longboats are on the way. Dang! But also, guys, this is so sick. This is so sick. If Vinch ends up killing all the fish with two galleys, that would be so amazing. You have no business having your fishing ships alive. You have no business killing your opponent's fish with this. But I just think, like, the forward docks with longboats, it just takes so much time. I also think Mihai noticed those galleys because he's sticking around. Or at least maybe he didn't do it so intentionally. Either way, he's in a great spot. And I think this longboat play is not going to be very successful. Still no Bod Canero for Vinch. The fishing ships have looped around to the front because he was hoping to have this area locked down, but it is not. And now the longboats are just going to escape. So what you do here for Mihai is you keep taking down those docks. You do obviously have to respect this, but basically your other fire galleys back at home can deal with this. I wonder if Vinchester knows he doesn't have Bod Canero. Longboats are really satisfying, though. <laughs> I love I love the longboat. It's so fun, man. It looks so cool. And they're so speedy. So, Vinchester, if he can really get a big... Even just, like, 8 to 10 of them. I feel like he, of all players, is going to have fun microing these things. But he's committed to the boom, and he does not have many farms. Like, clearly, he's microing a lot. And Mihai is... Well, his farming eco is pretty rough as well, to be honest. But he does have the five fish. He's adding the farms. And it's easier to micro. Fires are super easy to control compared to the longboats. The longboats you have to pay a lot more attention to. And while your docks are a bit cheaper with the Vikings, 
does not feel good to lose them like this. And this monk is like, come on, we don't get fire ships, please! Let us get one! Let us know what it feels like! And no conversion happens. The res collected is close. There's still the back dock for Vinch. Has the potential to micro. Lots of weak ships in here. Still no Bod Canero. Which I don't think he realizes yet. Or at least he cannot justify. You definitely want to go for Vils at this point. Like, you can get Bodkin a bit later. That's fine. Um, uh, Now you start to worry if you're Mihai that the longboats are going to work well. The opponent. And your main thinking is Imp. Now you can't do it right now, obviously. But you're thinking ahead. And so you have to make sure your eco's set. Because even if the longboats start to kill you and they get Bodkin Arrow... Um, you can have that window in early Imperial Age with fast fire ship. These longboats have done a good enough job without Bodkin. Uh, now I think we're we're seeing, and even I'm learning, why fast castle longboat was the play here. They're just doing so well. But this is a nice find. Any moment like this is all advantage to the fires. And that's not the first time we've seen that. Mihai's farms, perfect. They're good. That's how I rate them. I don't know why people would be asking me about farms, but that's how I rate them. Farms for Vinchester, fine. Third TC. The bigger eco play for him. We could see just two town center fast imp for uh, Mihai here. Because he just wants the cheaper dock text and he wants fast fire to win water. Early handcart. Whoa. That's interesting. I mean, handcart is a great economic upgrade, but it is 300 food and 200 wood. And to get that when you only have 44 villagers is very rare. Keep in mind, only five fishing ships behind this for Mihai. And Vinchester, of course, has had zero, but he does have the wheelbarrow upgrade and handcart upgrade for free. You know, some people research handcart earlier against the Vikings because they want to feel like they're on even footing. Because Vikings get that for free. I don't know. It's not... I don't even know if the math makes sense on it or whatever, but I do that on occasion. Obviously, you don't catch me playing islands that frequently, but... It might be the logic there. Longboat mass still there. Now, Vinch thinks he has Bodkin right now, and he never gets it. That could be a big issue later on, but Mihai has just stopped making Navy. So this gives Vinch a real opportunity, and they are very close together here on these islands, guys. Longboat just checking the back, runs into some houses. Longboat's now going to the front. And now it could be uh, Vinchester's turn to start shredding the docks. I think that would make sense. Still just producing longboats from the back. Vinchester looping around. Interesting. Is there no benefit to repairing ships in competitive AoE? No, we see repairing ships a lot. Uh, repairing range ships is not common, though, because it's... Uh, the idea with this type of unit is that you're going to be winning the fights anyways if you have enough of them. Whereas, like, with a fire galley, and you have a very weak fire galley, you obviously need that HP to close in. You're correct, though. There's a lot of weak ones in there, so maybe Finch could do it, but... It is really common with fire ships and, and, and demo ship wars. But on more expansive water maps where you have to move around a lot, you don't see the repairs as much. On hybrid maps where it's just small amounts of water, you'll see it more. So, Mihai's on the way to the Imperial Age here. He's on his way up. Vinchester has not shown any confidence in being around these docks right now. I think he's still really paranoid. Maybe because his ships are so weak. I think there's definitely some concern that he's going to be surrounded here by fires. But from what we can see, he's not going to be surrounded by fires here. Mihai's just giving up his area. But what Mihai is going to do... Is he's dropping docks over here. Now, if you see this in Vinchester's shoes, you will think your opponent's on the way to Imp, and you will be terrified. That is not a good thing to see. Because no one's going to do that in Castle Age after it's been so silent. They're going to do that when they've clicked up to Imp. So Vinch may show some urgency here, and he may start using the market to click up as well. Res Collected should be looking better for Vinchester over time now, because he has more villagers. And again, long bows, uh, or long boats, excuse me, we're not playing Britons here. But then also heavy demos can be really good for the Vikings against the fast fires that are going to come out. But we've got 
fires. Well, soon we'll have fires in queue. We'll have fast fire. We'll have a lot of different things coming here from Mihai, and I think Mihai's got a really solid window. And this is the window where normally Italians are the strongest. This is their point in the game. Early Castlage and early Imp. They're just insane. Also, speaking of insane, these longboats are destroying the docks so quickly. And Vinch knew he didn't have Bodkin. That was calculated. Wow, interesting. This demo, if it lands, guys. Oh! Oh, dude! Killed four ships with that. Oh, that was clutch there. That was epic, man. Oh, man. We talked about how weak the ships were, and he saw that too. Beautiful demo there from Mihai. Also love how he's still back here attacking the docks. And now Vinchester knows to run. Now Vinchester knows this is bad for me. And Vinchester doesn't have docks. Like, he's got one dock. This is bad, man. I, like, This is a bad position to be in, right? He has to be very sneaky with wherever he places those. Certainly along the front's not a good idea. I think Mihai's strategy has been near perfection. He killed his opponent's fish while maintaining his own fish. He had nice eco. He didn't compete with the longboats because the longboats in Castle Age could do very well. Now that it's going to be in the Imperial Age, he's checking the backside for docks. He's checking the front side for docks. And he also researched Shipwright, which helps out so much here. And again, that's why I think my feeling coming into this was that Italians are number one on islands coming into the qualifier. Um, I think it might have shifted a little bit. I think Armenians still insane. Dravidians are still insane. Like, those are probably my top three. Vikings maybe fall into the fourth or fifth, fifth spot. If we're talking, like, optimal play the whole way through. The thing is, Italians just have so many savings on their docks, and the savings on each age just help them so much. And also, transport ship here from Mihai. So, in this version of Islands, we've added a lot more resources to these neutral islands. And so, Mihai, knowing this could go late, is going to try and snag these relics while he can. Because he knows, he can see it, Vinchester's docking the very back of his base. And Vinchester's going to try and make a big, big play back on the water here. Where are the longboats at for Vinch? Okay, so he's hiding, actually. Which is really good. Like, he needs to keep as many ships alive as possible. Mihai must be, one, must be a little confused by that. Elite longboat on the way for Vinchester. Yeah, Vinch is just like, if I don't move, he'll never find me. And there are random yellow streaks everywhere looking through the blue, looking in the darkness, looking for ships. Like, he's looking around. I think he might be more paranoid right now about the islands and the docks. That makes sense. Look at these longboats. <laughs> So this is where you need to have a galleon switch coming in behind it if you're Mihai. He's made 30 fires, guys. But he hasn't been able to break his opponent with the fires. We also haven't seen a landing. I would have loved that. You're so close. You've been an imp so much faster. A landing to build barracks here to make some condos would be so good. Finch is so exposed against something like that. That has not happened. Here are the other longboats. And we'll see if they can group up with their friends. And there is the upgrade that here we call Bob's Vinegar. So Bob, thanks for the vinegar. Bob's Vigar, that will add extra range onto the longboats. That is a tech that you pretty much need to have here if you want to max out. And obviously they're going to want to max out. Again, no landings whatsoever for Mihai. Is that something he needs to be doing right now? Like he's got Vinch in the back corner. And going full water right now. But the longboats are massing. Mihai's not producing much, guys. Okay, there's the galleon upgrade. And there's ballistics. Okay, and, and also bracers in. Chemistry will probably be in if it's not already. So you would want elite longboat. And you would want heavy demo. But you would also want the middle area. You want relics right now if you're Vinch. And Mihai, you've got to... Mihai's maybe going to castle here. Mihai, you got to snag these relics while you can. And castle while you still can. This is a really good castle for Mihai. That'll make it awkward for Vinchester to move through. Vinchester has to hit and run. But notice he's running away from the fights on both sides. He's getting great engagements. Because his micro has been fantastic and this unit is really strong. But in order to get here, 
He has had to back the whole way up. And he now goes for elite cannon galleon. Whoa. You make one mistake with your micro, and then you lose all your longboats to the fires, though. You've got to be careful. I mean, I don't know how Vinchester can micro like this, dude. His micro has been so good all series. It's just incredible. I still think that micro in game one takes the cake for me. That micro next to the Siege Workshop on top of everything else was so impressive. But yeah, castle's up. That castle's huge. And now Vinchester's going to be like, are you kidding me? Now, this whole time, these fires are giving time to Mihai to get his own galleons out, to get his own ranged navy. And he's done such a good job there. He is now going to bring uh, monks and villagers now. The monks will probably grab these relics, and then he can mine this gold, mine this stone, and have more resources in the long run, which becomes a big deal on this on version of Island. We had a decision, and it was like, do we, like, make the trees have double the amount of wood on Islands? Because players run out of resources. And then I did some test games, and I thought about it, and I was like, but no, because it could be the same exact result. It's just the game goes an extra hour, right? So it is definitely a thing. It's like more often than not, you are going to run out of resources rather quickly when you're spending so much wood. Having these resources is the big change with this version of Islands. It's like we, we didn't have this much wood here in the past. We had the Mimi Archer Ranges, right? And then we didn't have this much stone and gold. We didn't have these relics. And Mihai's going to have six relics if things continue to go according to plan. But there's 50 longboats for Vinchester. <laughs> 50 longboats. That is a lot of boats. And he's got elite cannon galleon already. And that castle will go down very quickly if Vinchester isn't careful. My, or, or, sorry, if Mihai isn't careful. Oh, man. Okay, so Vinch, he, want, he would love to get this through to this area if he could. Right now, he's just going to defend his stone there. Nice job. Mihai needs to and wants to kill these cannon galleons. Now, these fire ships will not last. We've established that. The longboats shred them. But the galleons should do a bit better of a job. Now, in recent patches, the galleons now do more damage against ships than they ever did. There's been so many changes to the ga to, to the way you can get cannon galleons in the game. We also have had things like Dramans introduced to a bunch of sieves. But for the, this game, which is so old, right... Usually, cannon galleons didn't assist in the fights. Now they can. Vinchester still microing here, dropping a castle there to protect Golden Stone. I mean, that Golden Stone is brutal for him right now. And he still doesn't have the relics, and he still needs to push this. And there's just so many freaking galleons and, and, and uh, longboats here. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer longboat, or do you prefer the galleons? I think I'm going to go with the longboat, because I think there's more of them here. But Mihai may be taking engagements because he wants to reinforce behind this. I think galleons have shown to do pretty good against the longboats. I think I don't know if Vinch is intentionally queuing up galleys there because he wants to make a switch to mix in galleon. But anyways, Mihai still holding this castle. And now he has cannon galleons attacking Vinchester here. That is so good. That is so good. So he's kept his castle up so far. And he will take Vinchester's castle right down. Vinchester is being punished for not having the middle of the map with his navy. That's simply what it comes down to, right? He has his docks back here. Mihai has been ready to take the fights in the middle. And the castle crashes down for Vinch. This could be brutal for Vinch. Second time I've seen hoardings from Mihai. A tech we so rarely see that just to keep his castles up. But he's actually this castle that's researching it. And those cannon galleons are really shooting this down fast. One more volley from Vinch. That castle's going to go down. He didn't get the volley. He didn't get the volley. And we have a big fight. Vinchester could still win the fight, though. There's 31 galleons. There's 60 longboats. The longboats say so long. Galleons. Or, uh, yeah, that. Uh, galleons. Look at how they stack. This is crazy. And Mihai still is the relics. Now, I don't know. Okay, he's going to bring these two home. He still has the gold. He still has the own on the, the, the everything on the island. And then he is denying stone and gold from Vinch. Like, Vinch is running out of resources quickly here. Vinch. Back on this castle. Mihai is investing a lot into repairs. Which is good to hold the position. But also, that means he won't have the resources banked. 
right? Which is kind of an interesting aspect of this. 72 longboats for Vinchester. My goodness. Castle finally falls. It's just so much navy. And Vinchester wastes no time. Uh, he will queue up a transport in one of these docks. And... Uh... Villagers? Yikes, dude. Um... <laughs> You ever go on a cruise and realize you're veering off course? <laughs> um, yeah, Vinchester wants the stone and gold here quickly. But for now, he needs to be able to conveniently take these resources. And what a crazy, crazy battle. Cannon galleons for both are being microed behind. The cannon galleons have contributed with some kills. The galleon number is higher than before for Mihai. Mihai is landing. That transport is led to a landing where he is dropping a castle on Vinchester, and Vinchester says, N I'm gonna drop two right next to that. What? This is ridiculous. The longbow count isn't what it was before for Vinchester, though, and Mihai still has relics. Mihai still has neutral resources. Mihai's castle will probably go down, but it is harassment. And there's 50 galleons here for Mihai. Mihai's definitely got a chance to hold this. I love the energy of the castle. I'm not sure if it was the right play or not. We'll see. Vinchester has to back away towards his own castles. Now, he's going to have his two castles there, which can help him. And there he goes into his transport, desperate for these resources, which he can't really take unless he builds a castle. And he can't build a castle there because if he builds it, because he built the two castles here. Actually made a treb here as well, which obviously he doesn't need at this point. I think Mihai can do this. I'm noticing Vinchester doesn't have the longbow count he had before. Mihai's got a lot of fresh ships. And Vinch will probably have some confidence too that like his ships are better because of the fights before. But a lot of that was definitely number, uh, number oriented. The wood count will become an issue now. But there's still wood, there's still gold, there's still the relics for Mihai. If Mihai can just get maxed out and prevent Vinchester from taking these resources. He's villager. Oh my god. He he built a lumber camp to steal a tree. That is, well, not really worth it. Uh, it pays for itself, but he's still... He, he stole the tree from Vinchester, knowing that wood will be an issue. And they even fight off the berserk. Wow, well played there, Mihai. And hey, your opponent made some berserks, too. Worth it? Question mark? Oh, man. What crazy engagements, guys. Oh, this is such a close game. Vinchester's up 2-1. He is the favorite as well. To go up 3-1 would be so good for his nerves. Not be good for Mihai, of course. I still feel like I, I'm, I have a lot of faith in this Galleon Mass. The Galleon Mass is still pretty good. I think a lot of it is because his production is so much closer to everything, whereas Vinchester's production is all on the backside. Vinchester always has units in queue, but they're not instantly arriving to the engagements. And that could decide this game. I think it is deciding this game. I actually believe those words. Navy count is, is much better right now for Mihai. And Mihai is going to bring some villagers here to chop these trees ahead of time. Good thinking. Longbow count on screen. What, what Capture Age says is higher for Vinchester. But they're not all engaging at the same time. Just two relics for Vinchester. As Mihai has been extremely patient here. And continues to take very strong engagements. In mind, Vinchester does still have these villagers here unprotected. He does have these castles which could be taken out. And, I mean, it's been a, it's been a great game, guys. <laughs> this has been a great game of Islands. I loved it. Fast castle from both of them. So unique. Oh, God. Are you kidding me, Mihai? Mihai's going to drop a castle here? There's cannon galleons. There's longboats. Go back. Go back. Go back. Okay, they go back. He's going to go back. Just chop these trees, man. Don't build a castle there yet. Mihai's a big fan of his forward lumber camps, I got to say. Big battle here, folks. Big battle. This is so important as resources run dry. Who wins the fight? Now Mihai thinks it's a good enough fight for him where he could drop the castle there. And he's going to make Vinchester make a decision. Do you use the cannon galleons against my castle or do you use the cannon galleons against my ships? Because if you go for my castle, my ships will destroy your ships. And Mihai is taking this. There's no more longboats in queue for Vinchester. He drops his own castle here, which uh, could be good. Mihai's population is higher. His castle will lead to some kills. 
I honestly, it'd be better if he could kill Navy. But Mihai has just not given up control on the neutral islands and has never given up on producing Navy. And at one point when it was 80 longboats for Vinchester, we thought that he couldn't be broken. Mihai eventually just whittled him down. Now, this, th these castles are really strong right now. These castles need to be dealt with. But there's cannon galleons here from Mihai. And the GG's called. What a game. Mihai gets the job done. That was such a good game for Mihai because it looked so rough for him at various points. He was patient. He was calm. He was relaxed, as all the best players in the world are. And, I mean, if we were to look at the res collected here, maybe it tells us some of the story. But he collected more gold and more of that stone. And, of course, we know he still had this to work with. I mean, he was just there running out of trees at this point. No, he still had wood over here. But, yeah, the, the longboat play, I think the, the key thing that became obvious to me, in order to make the longboats work, Vinch needed the docks to be in the north. And so the longboats were obviously insanely strong once he got to them. But the ships were traveling such a long distance to get to the fights. And Mihai, who had the map control, right, because of his fast fires and, and how he played it early in, he was able to have all of his production coming from right next to every engagement. And it was just tiny little engagements, which were slightly better for Mihai over the last 10 minutes. Uh, that eventually led to him you know, snowballing and winning the whole thing. Also loved the aggressive castles. I mean, sometimes the aggressive castles on this map can be seen as bad. But when you have taken the stone and the gold, when you have the six relics, I think that's the type of thing you want to do. Vinchester never wanted this castle here. He never wanted this castle here, which he ended up losing. Right? He would have wanted his castles to be on this island, but he he felt like the only way to react to a castle drop was to drop his own. I think that was that was a nice thing there. Super close game, though. Really interesting. But Vinch eventually just realized, like, I just do not have the galleon mass anymore. It's just simply not there for me. So, lovely stuff. Now, I, Vinchester, I think, with his earlier advantages, maybe was overconfident and thought, oh, I just have the game now. Um, would have loved to have seen forward docks from him. I actually think that if he went for... Because he always had a lot of ships in queue. There was one point where he had, like, 80 longboats and then, like, 40 ships in queue. So, I think if at that point he went for more forward docks, Maybe it could have made a difference there because it was very, very even there for various points. All right. Finch lost the game because Mihai took control of neutral islands. I mean, I think that was part of it. I think controlling the neutral islands was extremely important. I don't think you can say that just taking the neutral islands is, is what won Mihai the game there, right? There's a lot of different things that played into it. Crazy series. Uh, once again, everybody, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for being here. We'll have sets all day today. I really appreciate the support and the interest in the qualifiers. This is the first time that I am also simultaneously streaming to YouTube in six years. Actually, that's not true. Six years ago, I streamed on YouTube just as a test. So if you go to my live tab on YouTube, you'll actually get to hear what I sounded like six years ago, which, trust me, don't do that. But uh, happy to be multi-streaming it to YouTube today. I know there's a lot of people out there who wanted to... Uh, enjoy it on YouTube. So if you prefer that method, if you're watching there, thank you. Um, we have um, apparently 2,000 people watching on YouTube right now, which is amazing. Thank you for that. We also have people subscribing. We had like some donos over there too. It's been amazing. All right. Um, sub count here on Twitch has been awesome. Welcome everybody. Salutes to you. Uh, I'm still kind of waking up, but hopefully the commentary has been good. We have two more best of sevens after this today. Winner of this series, winner of all the sets now, qualify for the main event of Hidden Cup. And they will be playing on hero names in the main event, February 25th through March 3rd. And every day has been filled with nonstop work for the main event. There's some of the heroes. I am all in on the hero on the bottom left, Salim the Grim. Thank you very much. Salim's going to take the whole thing. Uh, or so I think. Or so I hope. But, uh... Yeah, other people really excited about certain names there. You can let me know which one's your favorite. But thank you. Forever Frank, thank you for the gifted subs, my friend. Let's get into the next game. It is 2-2 here. This best of seven has, has just delivered so far. It has been back and forth. Makes me happy. Makes me very happy. But also makes me nervous for them, right? Oh, man. Losing this series would be brutal. Because you can say, if you lose this series, you have the backup series um available on sunday 
but you're going to be up against another elite player there too. So it's not like a sure thing that whoever loses this is going to be in. And when they're playing this good, they'll want to take full advantage of it here. So catching up to live time, man, I like take a short, like two to three minute break just to thank people for being here, explain some things. These guys are taking no breaks. What is this? My wrists hurt just watching Vinchester Micro. My God. 2-2 two, two here. Winner moves into Hidden Cup 5 main event. It's been a crazy series. And I have full confidence. I mean, whoever wins this series, are they going to do well in the main event? abso freaking lootly dude. abso freaking lootly they are. I mean, you don't know who you're going to be up against, of course. But they've, they've had lots of practice in the qualifier. It High-level practice. And then also... Um, there's going to be new maps, and I think with how I've seen these guys play on some of the, the different maps that Hidden Cup Qualifier has had, the new maps as well, I think will be really good for them. So, uh, crazy stuff. Um, I'm casting with Margugu for the next series, guys, because it is Sito against Sobek for series number two. I thought, who better to bring in than uh, another Frenchman? But uh, I think I did reach out to Dave to cast... Ganji, MBL. Uh, if Dave is on for the third set of the day, Ganji, MBL should be a, a, a really crazy set as well. All right. So, Franks against Malians. As we were catching up, I did see that Vinchester stole some pigs. This is a really nice matchup. Now, the Franks have had a really nice win rate here, but a big reason for that win rate is because of Mihai, actually. Uh, Mihai, I think, played with him three times. Might have been just twice. But I know he played Franks against Saracens on uh, in his second round against Overtaken and won there. And then he also played Franks against Byzantines in the third round against Margugu and won there. So he will know how good the Franks are even if there are options to counter them. But the Malians are a good civilization to match up against the Franks in my opinion. Any Civ that gets Camel usually is. And Malian's just a little bit more flexible. Franks, just super consistent with their economy. And Vinchester loves a good scout rush here, so I think he's going to do that. Vinchester choosing to make a mill on the fish over here, which is a bit more risky, of course. But I think it's worth it. I think we'll see it a bit more. But I don't know. Sometimes players, like the higher the level gets, the less the players want to take risks. I think there will be a difference of approach in the main event for slopes. But Mihai uh, pushing in some resources from the slope right now. Main gold for Vinchester is kind of brutal. He does have this gold very far on the back, which is really nice. But if he's planning to take the main gold and the main stone, yikes, dude. Like, that is way better here for um, Mihai with the gold and stone being on the back. So certainly something to think about there. And you do have the other options of resources out there, though. If you're Vinch, I think this gold, like, he's obviously going to take this gold. So that's, that's fine. But stone will need to be something he needs to be creative with. Does have the stone over here. Yeah, it would be wild if someone else tried the strategy that Tato did on this map with the fast castle. Uh, I don't think we'll see it because the level will be very close. Um, full respect to fire, of course, but he was not the favorite in that series. Tato... I think did that strategy because he thought he could get away with it. It was a really fun game though. And it is a really solid strat to go for Mongols and Step Lancers, so but that was on uh that's on the extra channel. It's also on the main YouTube channel if you missed it. Basically he went fast castle with Mongols on this map, and he went Step Lancer. And it was a really crazy game. Oh, oh man, check this out. Vinchester, he just now saw the barracks. I don't think he knows militia are coming. Maybe he does. God, Mihai hasn't scouted this. Okay, Mihai needs to know right now. He's not on berries with Franks. He has to have milled the side. This is what happens when you push resources, guys. Instead of scouting, this is what can happen. There is potential for him to come right here. Oh, you've got to know about it, dude. It's part of the map. It's such a bit... Oh. I mean, it's wild how Vince just stands here. Guys, I would be... <laughs> These vil my vills would be here. <laughs> I would be pre-walling them. <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, it is just militia and a scout, so we don't know if it would have led to villager kills. But you know, it brings it back to the start. 
scouting. And I think a lot of players like to streamline their builds and just push in resources, which is, of course, good. But making those other resources still really important. There's clearly a style difference between the two. Like, this is the second time now in this series we've seen the little two militia play. No, no, actually, three out of the four games we've seen militia in Dark Age. And then eventually even Man at Arms. Um, in some cases from Mihai. I haven't seen Vinch make infantry once. He does not seem interested. But it was game one infantry, game two infantry. And then out game four, obviously game three was island, so... Wait, no, this is game five. Okay, well, anyways, a lot... Yellow man make infantry. Blue man, no infantry. Okay, there's my professional commentary. I think you got the point. Um... Manchester massing scouts. Villagers still here on the sides. Taking the food, which is great. And I think there must be some sense right now from Mihai that he's not going to find much damage with this anymore. He's going to scout this area and be like, oh, Vinch isn't taking these resources, just like me. Not knowing that Vinch is taking this. But here's the thing about the side resources. It's not necessarily way better than farms. And Mihai has good farming eco right now, too. So, But can he protect it? Because he has all his military here on the front. And I'm sure he senses he's exposed here and that the scouts are coming forward. It got awfully quiet. Here's Vinchester. Vinchester swooping in. Vinchester sees the villager. And just like that, Vinchester, no hesitation, actually goes in for the spear as well. I'd love to take the villager too, but is going to... Ooh, actually doesn't kill the spearman. And meanwhile, Mihai ran directly into a TC with the spearman, but... Normally, you want that spearman to die, and I think if Vinch would have microed it with all four scouts, he would have killed the spear without losing a scout. Still, though, he'll know that one spearman is weak, and we'll see how Vinch micros this. But he's distracted at home. He's distracted at home. And his distraction at home led to a kill. And he's distracted again! All right, Vinchester. Not doing as much as he would have wanted here. Weak villager, though. Mihai's made so many spearmen right now. My goodness. Did end up losing another spearman to the TC. This TC has five kills. <laughs> and TC MVP. Uh, what do you think, Mark? Who's the MVP of the series? Well, you know, the more I think about it, I think about the town center from Vinchester in game five. That town center accomplished more than Vinchester did with all of his scouts. Anyways, um, we'll see what the booth has to think about that later. Archer range now for Vinch, and he chooses to take the gold on the front. Even though that gold is back here. It's, that's really risky. But, you know, a couple archers could do well against the spears. And it's a stable behind this for Mihai, so Mihai's not going to switch into archers at all. He just wants to go into camels, most likely, to counter the Franks. So thanks again, everybody, for the support. I am just going to shout out some people in my chat right now because my sub list is broken, which is horrible for a streamer. But thank you, Lord DVM. Thank you, Kalido. Thank you, Calpit. Thank you, Tasty Catfish. Thanks, everyone, for just being here. Um, I, I, I know there's been some resubs I've missed, but again, it's not showing up. It is just a blank thing list right now, which is really annoying me. But appreciate you guys. Black Belt Dave, welcome back. I know you're one of my five-year subs. Thank you. For not just being here, but defending us with your black belt of Vinchester. I wonder if at some point here he regretted getting Wheelbarrow. Because he's had the resources to go Castle Age for a bit. And that Wheelbarrow upgrade takes a painfully long time. Hmm. That scout. Keeping that scout alive is really valuable, actually. It almost died there. Had it gone down... And there's really no chance that Mihai is going to scout the fact that Vinchester is going to go crossbow here. But it's always something as the Franks, you have to think about when you're up against a camel sieve. Do I want to just play into knights? Usually the answer is no. So a combination of knights and crossbows would make a lot of sense. I think right now Vinchester knows his opponent's going camels because he does not see any signs of archers. It would just feel very obvious, I think, to do that. But like we had just said, this now gets scouted. At least the one archer gets scouted. And the Malian infantry are going to fight away here against the archer. and might actually end up getting a kill because you get the extra pierce armor with Malians. 
Killing an archer with a spearman would be epic, but it doesn't happen. Two, two, crazy series here, guys. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you. T90, are you looking at YouTube chat? Technically, no. Because according to Twitch contract, you're supposed to... You can multi-stream, but the experience that people get on Twitch must be priority. So definitely not. Definitely not appreciating those of you who are watching on YouTube and supporting in whatever ways you can there and prefer to watch there. I would never, ever acknowledge you. <clears throat> Archers and Scouts Revenge. Very interesting. Second TC now for Mihai in the north. And then he also goes for another TC. So, wow. Now he saw his opponent was going Archers, which is critical because he's going to go Knights now. But he's not really committing that much to army. He's just going for the eco approach. He's not gone to the sides either. I, You guys know this. I'm obsessed with this map. I think this is a really good map. I love how some games we have TCs on the sides. Some games we have pushes down the middle. Some, uh, some games we have... Uh, like, the, you could do a similar thing every time. But there's so many pros and cons to every position you might want to take. And here for Mihai... He wanted to go for the big eco play, but he's going to have no map control on the sides, and he's gone for very passive play in the opening. Vinchester's here to punish this. A Vinchester will TC the front, which will protect that gold. He's still not walled, but that's a good spot. And honestly, even though Mihai has n doesn't have army yet to deal with this, I also have to say, really sick job from him not to lose more vills. And actually, early plus two armor is really rare here. I could work really nice against the army that Vinchester has. So Vinch gets through. Vinch sees this now. And Vinch is like, oh, these knights don't have bloodlines. They don't have armor. I can fight it. Well, now armor's in. Still no bloodlines. Vinchester kills one knight. Vinchester backing away. Oh, God. This is a good fight for Vinch. Mihai and myself. I, I thought that the fight would be better there with the plus two armor. That's what he was hoping for. That was a really good value fight there for... for uh, Vinchester. And guys, the unit grouping being better now on the patch that we've so kindly been given by Microsoft for this event now looks really good for crossbows. Like, we have not been seeing this because players are scared, were scared to go for crossbows because they're worried they'd regroup directly into knights like this. I'm really happy with the performance. Also, look at Vinch. He knows that's going to be healed up at some point. He dives underneath the TC. And kills that knight, and oh, Mihai is just being completely rolled right now. Vinch will TC the right side, which Mihai may actually see with that weak scout. And that's just to take the food. But Mihai can barely take gold right now. And still double crossbow production from Vinch. Non-stop production, it feels like, from him. This range has been producing, well, only 75% of the time over the last minute. So not as impressive as I thought it was. But still, the fact that he's got army is massive here. And the three TC play, you, you want smooth eco. You're not. It's not going to feel smooth at all when you have villagers in and out of your town centers like this. Uh, Mihai is going to take a page out of Vinchester's book from that quarry game and try and loop around this way to pick off the reinforcements. I don't know what she's doing. She's like, I wanted to be a warrior. That's not going to happen. Also kind of interesting that Vinchester was going to go Siege Workshop. I think going Siege Workshop when... Um, your opponent has shown knights is probably not the play. I think monks would make sense. Look at Vinch, guys. Patrolling here with the light cap, patrolling here with the light cap. He is locked in. And he's also going to see this scout. So very, very attentive indeed. Mihai still in the game. Mihai has not been broken. The matchup can be good for the Malians if this goes later. And it seems like Vinchester's going to need a little bit more to break him. But Vinchester will know that Mihai is, is in the middle. And he's got him surrounded right now. Definitely a situation where I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate to see a really long castle age from Vinch. Like, um, I, it would feel pretty comfortable to go for a fourth and a fifth town center even. But if you're going to focus that much on economy, you need to also still micro your army. Inch's micro has been unbelievable today. Yeah, so basically the patch we have, so I had the option to use it or not. It was my decision. It The regrouping problems we had are gone. The teleport is gone. Um, 
Uh, I actually, there's a list of four or five things, but basically regrouping is, is feels as good as it ever has, in my opinion. The, uh, I think villagers actually are, are a bit better as well, but that, that was not listed, so I don't know. Teleportation's better. Basically, all unit units don't regroup different directions when you try and click them around, and that's the biggest thing, so. But there is no, uh, to clarify this, okay, this is for Hidden Cup, so you need to go back in time, and you need to sign up for the Hidden Cup qualifier a month ago, and you need to make it to the fourth round to be able to play on this. All right. I have no information on uh, how this will go for the day-to-day -day gameplay for you and others. T90 is this match on a new patch. Yes, I just said it's on a new patch, Swift Dank Coyote. Listen up, Coyote. I thought you had good hearing. Sorry. Um, 69 villagers against 72 right now. Military's really good, solid for Vinchester. He can use the light calves effectively against monks, and then he can use these knights against the scorpions, but... Have to get the fight in the right way there. And those knights were very weak. Knights back away. Noticing Vinchester's got a couple Lytles back here, which is a little interesting. He's very heavy on stone, and he definitely wants a castle forward. And he's not going to wait for it. He is going to go for that castle now. And he's going to drop the castle right there. Well, he knows that Mihai's on the right. <laughs> but Mihai sees the Vils. Okay, Light Cav still swooping in. Like, where are you? It actually slows the army down as well. Wow, that Light Cav got converted. What? And how are you supposed to deny this? Can you deny this? Do you build your own castle if you're Mihai? What do you do? Oh, that is... That is a really good castle from Vinchester. I do love Vinch's Light Cav activity. He's always checking, man. He knows those monk that monks, knights, and scorpions all move at a different speed. And that's very likely they'll be separated in some instances. And that castle will go up, and Vinci is just going to TC this gold. So he denies the gold, essentially, because this TC is going to get shot down. He then TCs a gold. But I should say, meanwhile, a little escape here from Mihai, and Mihai will be over here on this stone. Mihai also counterattacking these knights of solid upgrades, like we said before. So this could do damage. Vinchester needs to react here. He does react. He does quick wall behind. He does have some pikes. But the knights still will not be killed just by the TC and the pikes. Not just yet. Vinchester, though, still hoping to run directly through to this gold, I'm sure. And he actually tossed all of his crossbows inside of the castle. So that TC gets shot down so much faster. That is such a good move. Just going to make a couple knights here. He will deal with this. And he also reacted here. Yeah, Vinch is on five TCs. Right? Or can I not count? Four. Okay, whatever. Four, five. It's all the, it's on this, all the same ballpark, right? crazy economy from him it hurts that mihai has to drop a castle to protect this goal or oh, is it five is it five people are saying oh it is oh yeah like i said it's five um <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> anyways all right i had it right the first time and we'll see what he does with this 5tc economy because again it feels natural to me you've got your opponent castle dropped your resources aren't there for Imp yet. I think you just spam knights. And make tons of army to deny the other areas. So denying this area would be paramount. And then, of course, getting back over here could be good. Well, Noah's opponent has monks. But, like, if you can make... Monks really matter when you're just on a couple knights. If you can make 20 knights, a couple monks converting some knights isn't really going to be something that bothers you that much. And I think Vinch wants another castle. We'll see if these villagers do it or what. But, I mean, a castle here feels very natural. Okay, right there. You see those crossbows and how they went back immediately? On the, If it was on the previous patch, they would regroup and get hit by the scorpions. The unit behavior is exactly what we want there. If you guys would like, I can actually make a little comparison video at some point if I have the time. But I think the point is, Vinchester's unit controls looked amazing. And... He is spamming these knights, like we said. And he wants to drop another castle on the right side here with unsloped. Mihai has just been behind since the start, it feels like. I mean, his aggression early was nice. But Vinchester has not allowed him to have any flow or any room to breathe in this game. Honestly, Vinch, I love that castle spot. But I think it's so much better just dropping it here, dude. You've got gold. You've got stone. 
I mean, Mihai's gonna drop a castle there now. This is gonna get wild. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Mihai can still take stone. He's got some Gabetto. He sees the Vilzer here. He'll kill a few of them. Knights from Vinchester are going to loop into the back. And Vinch actually cancels some of his knights in production, and he's going to go up to the Imperial Age, which is a really good play. Vinchester crossbows. Dive underneath the Mangadel. Crazy micro again from him, as he has had all series. And doesn't lose a unit, because he's on top of the hill. And will kill more villagers. And will finish this castle, which will shoot down this TC. And there's knights in the back. And there's still a castle on the side. And Mihai must be completely overwhelmed at the moment. God, this is brutal. Oh, man. This is just so brutal. And now, if you're on the way to Imp, and you see this castle is up for Mihai, you can simply just drop one at home. And that gives you a good position to trap from. Mihai is going to try his best here. But he has not been able to find good fights. Even though many people feel the Malians are a nice matchup against Franks. It's now the third time I've seen Franks against Camel Sivs on this map. And they're still winning with Crossbow and Knight and Eco. Very interesting. Franks are Franks. That's what people say. They're just still so smooth. There's so many bonuses that flow so well together. I love how Vinchester played the map as well, guys. He has buildings in every side area while also having two castles in the middle. Like, he is he's truly focused on every single area you possibly can. And, well, I think Mihai, he already knows this is bad. He's playing on until he knows he's dead because this is such a big moment for him in his career. Biggest moment in his Age of Empires career here. But maybe say, you know, maybe you could say that that series against, uh, who did he play after uh, he played MBL in the NAC qualifier? I actually forget. Was it Jordan, maybe? Maybe that series is comparable, right? Because it was one series away from making it to uh, a big event. Because he was close to qualifying for NAC, but couldn't make it. But either way, he's not gonna he's not gonna like that Imperial Age. I'm sure in some ways he sensed it. Vinchester's all over him here. And Vinchester, who is our favorite, goes up 3-2 in the best of seven. A beautiful game from Vinch, as we said. I do feel like in some ways for Mihai, he just wasn't able to utilize the aspects of the map all that well here. I think a good example of it was he never scouted properly to know that Vinchester was here. So, like, he looked so long to find damage with Militia and the scout. But he was just too tunnel visioned and never pre-scouted it. Was never able to deny this which was a big problem. And then, in Castle Age, he dropped the town centers, but he never really had any side control. He never had front control. He really gave up a lot of map control there, and Vinchester made him pay. But Vinchester, up 3-2. That does not mean this series is over, because Vinchester won the first game, which was still possibly the best game of all the games, and they've all been insane. Like, this has been peak Age of Empires. I'm loving it. Uh, but Mihai has always responded. So, if Mihai responds again, maybe we'll get that game 7. There's the resources collected, though, from Vinch. And the pressure's all on Mihai. It feels like if this goes to game 7, that Vinchester might not have a civilization that at least, throughout the qualifier, has done very well. Whereas Mihai will have one. So, that's a big deal here. Vinchester would love to finish this off. Now, we've got Cross. I think this is the most difficult map to play of the 7 maps we have in the pool. Genuinely. There's so many different things. And in the previous game, I talked about the importance of scouting. I think it is so important that players are scouting over pushing deer. To find out where the opponent is. To find out where the opponent has docked. To find out their resource location. The Japanese are incredibly flexible, though. The Japanese have the cheaper lumber camps, mining camps, mills, which allows them to save so much. Their fishing ships are so strong. And Japanese can be so deadly on an open map with man-at-arms in front of that. Having said that, though, Vinchester, he played Huns before. And it just gets to a point where as long as you don't fall behind against man-at-arms, because I think it was actually this exact matchup in the previous round for him. They're super smooth. And not having to spend wood on houses, it, it, it just feels so good in Feudal Age. You could spend so much wood then on army. And this map, you're always producing out of multiple docks, your TC, and your land military buildings. Which leads to a lot of people getting population capped. 
Uh, that boar is on the back. And I don't know if Mihai saw it, but I wonder if being down, he would consider a steal there. His scout is forward very early here. Notice how Vinch said, uh, actually, let's not push deer. Notice how early Mihai is with the scouting. I think this is this is how you should be playing it. We've seen a lot of players push deer and miss out on scouting intel. But now Mihai can make informed decisions. And he thinks, okay, TC's probably here. Gold is exposed here. Gold could be a really big problem for Vinchester, so maybe that will be the pressure point. Huns have won two of three games so far in this quality. Both on cross, once versus Japanese. Okay, interesting. Yeah, well, the Japanese, the Huns versus Japanese game was actually Vinchester against uh, Dark. So it was Vinchester who won with Huns in this matchup before. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mihai wants to deny the dock. Vinchester saw the scout. Even delaying the dock could be really good, but the villager could still go down. Vinchester says no, but, but still the dock's not up. And the boar can't be brought in that easily for Vinchester either. And that scout that Vinchester wanted to use to scout the map may consider coming home now. But no, Vinch is just going to get Loom. I mean, honestly, it's a smart play. You're down a vill, but then you don't lose the vill. You still get your dock up. Obviously, well played from Mihai to be able to... Wow, that boar's running from Vinchester right now. Nice job from Mihai to force some... some uh, to get some damage in here in Dark Age. He's trying to block the villager now. Vinchester might not be able to dock on time with this. Like, Vinchester still hasn't docked because he has to click this so much. And, oh, okay, some scout HP gets taken off. I still like how Mihai's played this. I mean, Mihai's on two fishing ships. And Vinchester doesn't have any now because of that delay. Crazy. Which Civ bonus for resource saving is better? Uh, very simple answer. It depends. In early game, Japanese feel insane with their savings, and they can do a lot of things. In the middle of the game, though, the Huns feel very strong not having to spend the wood. But again, it's not like... It's not just not spending the wood, but it is also not getting population capped on a map where you produce a lot. And Chester still hasn't found the opponent, by the way. Like, his scout was here. Then when the scout shenanigans happened, he started to pull his scout home. He's seeing neutral golds. He's not seeing any signs of TCs. He must know that his opponent's going to be more towards the north now. And Vinchester, super early, is actually going to move forward to the left side with a vill. This is extremely uncommon timing. Even if you were to sneak a villager, you wouldn't normally do it this fast. I think he's going to adjust on the fly here. Like, right now, he doesn't know if his opponent is docked there or not. There is a chance, but it is more likely his opponent has docked the north. So if he sees the north, then he knows he can fish in the west. Yeah. Yeah, so now he will likely fish here. And then if he... I don't know if he wants to try and kill Japanese fishing ships at all, but if he wants to, then he could always sneak a villager this way. Yeah, Vinch will feel like he's a little bit behind at the moment. Just because of the delayed dock. This is an area he can invest into, though. And now Vinchester needs to scout and see the front of Mihai's base because Mihai has one of the best sieves for this. And Hunts are also one of the worst sieves in these moments because you cannot house wall. It actually hurts you to not be able to make houses. And does Vinch see this? Oh, dude, guys, Vinch has no clue. Just think of the scouting. Mihai scouted every resource Vinch is taking. Mihai scouted the pond and del delayed the dock and now mihai is sneaking a villager already and mihai has militia now on the way and, and vinchester doesn't see this now i think you can expect it in some ways from the japanese but he still doesn't see it and he also just checked with the fishing ship here both sides to see if there's a sneak dock but the dock is actually still going to go up anyways this is amazing for mihai this is amazing for Mihai if Vinchester doesn't notice it. This is going to be so much pressure. Vinch is pre-walling everything. So I think it's like... It's definitely at a level where you simply just expect man-at-arms from Japanese. And Vinchester checks again and notices this. Really well played. Doesn't make life easy for you though, but really well played. It's also kind of nice that he has just two fishing ships here. And he has two more over here. Usually you have four in one pond. 
So maybe he just doesn't... I don't know. Maybe he just gives up this these fish. I don't know. You never really want to just give up an area because then these two docks from Mihai can make fishing ships. And then he has such a big fish fleet. We do have an archery range here for Vinch. No range yet for Mihai because he went for the double dock. But again, we haven't yet hit that point where the Huns feel super fluid and feel like they're saving a lot of wood. But we're obviously getting much closer to that point. Vinchester's not making any more fish. He has the archer range. This is something that Mihai will see. And Mihai's scout is getting attacked. Vinch just keeps waiting. He expects Mihai to pull away, but Mihai hasn't yet. Nice job from Vinch not to be broken yet, but Vinchester never produced here. Vinchester will lose those fishing ships. How is Mihai going to spend his wood after these fire galleys? He's going to have three. Because he's expecting this to be contested. It will not be. And he doesn't have archers yet. So Vinchester could now win land, in theory, right? But the man-at-arms hoping to buy some time. Nice micro. Really nice micro from both players here. My goodness. Vinchester just evading that man-at-arm is sick. And Vinch has fletching already. There's a spear now. Vinchester evading that as well. God, there's so many tiny little things happening here with their unit control. It's very impressive. Vinch still over here with three. Now we see immediate fishing ships from Mihai. That's what I mean, right? If you just give up a pond, your opponent will instantly add fish there, which could be really bad for your economy. But if the range units get forward, like there is a real window here for Vinchester, who's still chasing the man-at-arms. He needs to be at Mihai's base. Mihai is so exposed. But Vinch is just, he wants to clear this up. And in doing so, is giving Mihai a lot of time. I think Vinch is always a player, though, who's comfortable if he has the army lead. And for that reason, he's going for this. Also, just doesn't have a lot of scouting on things, right? I do, again, I really like what he's done here. He's even preemptively adding a fire galley, just in case. Mihai, who finds some pigs and has done a good job to keep that scout alive, is going to find out that uh, there's a scout here. Now, Vinch is, he's paused and said drop. Like, yeah, like six times today. So he just paused again because he was dropping. Like, basically, the game will, like, speed up and slow down sometimes if your internet's being weird. So, kind of called that one. But, hey, the walls are up here from Mihai. Mihai is going to have ranged units now to defend. And that window that Vinchester had was closing a little bit. Or is closing a little bit. Eight fishing ships with four more in the queue right now in this pond here for Mihai, who's done... Everything so well so far. Again, the main thing was just a little bit of greed and not having the army to defend this. Now, if you go for YOLO, not YOLO cab archers. If you're on like three range cab archers with a couple knights here as Huns, it can be really awkward for the Japanese. I love how Vinci said walls. I'm the Huns, man. We're aggressive here. I will invent. I will not spend any of my wood on walls. I would just spend it on army does see these skirms though from Mihai now and nice job from Mihai that weak scout actually will kill that skirm and Vinchester worried about the army should be worried about his economy now but the resources collected is pretty close and Vin <gasps> no no way wait did, does Mihai notice this Vinch snuck a vill it was the vill that docked this and he walked through and Mihai doesn't notice that. Oh, shoot. That is such a big deal. He thinks this is a free pond for him. That's going to be six fishing ships exposed. And that will likely go down. He is on the way to the next stage, though. And he still has the fish here. But nice job from Vinchester. Now, the walls are up for Mihai. Mihai will go into ranged units still. Mihai's clicked up to Castle Age faster. Now, I want to remind you guys, because there, I think a lot of people there, a lot of people today have said, I wish both could win. The loser of every best of seven today and tomorrow, they do still have a second chance, and they will go into another best of seven on Sunday against other losers of the best of sevens, right? So after Friday and after um, 
Saturday, so tomorrow. There will have been six players who qualify for the main event because they will have won the best of sevens. And then there'll be three more the final day. So there is that. But like I said, you're playing so good. All the players are playing so good. It, it doesn't feel like... It's not going to feel great to lose the series and have to do it all over again. And maybe, maybe you're a bit rusty the next time, you know? Maybe you're not able to bring this level. There's lots of uncertainty. Vinchester, he should never be micring this. This is, dude, th th these are armored skirms. You've got archers. Nobody fights this, but Vinchester fights this. And Vinchester took the pond. Vinchester also scouting this pond to see if there's anything over here. And Vinchester, who had the fire galley over here, is already working away on the dock from Mihai. We'll see if Mihai kills any fish there. Vinchester is through with this army. Man, is he going to get some value from this. These scouts can push the skirms, and Mihai is falling apart. Oh, man. Now, he, he did have... I thought he was going to have an archer army, but it seems like he doesn't actually have that much. And just the Hun things, man. Look at the res collected. It's still super close. Obviously helped by the fact that those fishing ships were killed. And it is going to be cav archers for the Japanese. Interesting. Japanese Cav Archers do have a bonus now where they do extra damage against... Um, they do plus two damage against Archers, which would mean in a Cav Archer v. Car Cav Archer battle, the Japanese Cav Archers are actually stronger. Which is maybe why Vinchester is making a few Knights as well. But Hun Cav Archers are cheap, which I think is, is an underrated thing. Also, it is so fluid. Oh, man, and Mihai is getting wrecked. He got pushed off of gold. I don't think he ever expects Vinch to get value from this. This is a feudal age army. Maybe a little too hesitant to take engagements here with the Cav Archers there. And now Mihai might be shaking a little bit. Obviously, he is going to kill this. We knew this army from Vinchester was going to go down eventually. But such a good job. I mean, even this scout here contributed with four kills. Sick job from Vinch. To, to get through there, so many players see that wall and back away. This, this is not a scenario that Mihai is used to encountering. So Siege Workshop on the middle. Now, of course, it's admirable for the Huns to play open. But if you play open and you ever get military from the opponent in your base, it will be awful. I think Mihai now, he wants to kill the Vil that might be on the dock. And he also would love to still kill the fish here from Vinch. I don't think Vinch cares about fish anymore, truthfully. I think Vinch is not going to fish trap here. I think it's going to be like farms and TCs. It's going to be pressure. The fishing is great, and the fishing can add up over time. But this map is far too aggressive. And yet again, Vinchester is going to be through. Vinchester one win away from being back in Hidden Cup. He'll be a main event player again. He played so good in Hidden Cup 4. I just still remember watching him. You actually, you weren't, like, Vinchester's so aggressive and so micro-oriented, it does lead to a lot more confusion when trying to figure out who is who. This is someone like Hera, someone like Viper in the main event already. If Vinch joins, it should be amazing. God, his micro is so good. He distract. he knows the CA are attacking those. He splits it up. That knight's still killing more villagers. He's still here on the siege, uh, with the siege. His unit control's been amazing. Again, if you just got here and you really want to see some top-tier micro, just go back and watch the Castle Age sequence in Game 1 as well. And poor Mihai. He's played so good. He's come so far. But right now, this is looking brutal for him. Vinchester's got full control. And yeah, best of luck to you, Mihai. You have no gold now. I thought Mihai's map was better when it came to gold. Look at Vinch's gold. Awful, but you know what wins games? Military. And Vinchester's all over him with the military front right now. This is looking like the Vinchester of old, by the way. 2023 was a little inconsistent for him. This is looking like the Vinchester that everyone knows and loves. The top 10 Vinchester. And I know everyone's been training away and... Qualifier having $10,000 prize pool, I think, has really helped a lot of players. Maybe low Vinchester and Mihai's caliber to really train. The training, the quality's been amazing, but I think Vinch, he's just going to dive here. He's like, you know what? If I lose a knight, whatever. Hopefully I don't. He does lose it. That knight could kill his siege, so it is, it is risky, actually. It is risky. 
There's a reason why you don't normally take that engagement, because you don't want your siege to go down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Loses the Manganel. TC, though, is down. Vinchester kills the next monk. There's just villagers everywhere. I mean, this is just... This is just brutal. No gold means you can't make more monks. You can't make many more cab archers. That's probably a big reason why Vinch is taking the fights. And Mihai will likely be back on Sunday. I don't know who he could potentially face. I'm sure he'll be paying attention to the other sets who could win or lose there. But he's good enough to make it. He's going to have to be a little bit... Well, maybe hope he's not up against a player like Vinchester who's so aggressive in Cast Lake. He seems super solid. And this is just him realizing slowly but surely that he is dead here, I think. All of his cab archers are dead. Monk! Ah, oh, Monk doesn't get a conversion. Brutal. And the GG's called. And Vinchester, as Mihai says, good luck next, which is kind of funny because that means Vinchester qualifies. Um, yeah, Vinchester advances. And that good luck that Mihai has given him is going to be in Hidden Cup 5 main event. Congratulations, Vinchester. I cannot wait. I cannot wait till Vinchester puts on the mask and is one of the hidden players because he is so unbelievably good. And honestly, this is maybe some of the best Age of Empires I've seen from Mihai. He looks super improved. It continues to rise in skill. Vinchester had to bring his best today, but man, is his best good. He is so freaking fun to watch. So Vinchester joins the main event players. He will be... In Hidden Cup 5, February 25th through March 3rd. And that's that was a top 10 player right there. Mihai will be playing the loser of Sobek and Sato, I've been told. And honestly, I think Mihai might end up being... I, I want to say Mihai's going to be the favorite in that series. But we have to cast Sobek and Sato first to see what level's being brought there. It will be Sato and Sobek up next, by the way, for those that are keeping tabs. Whether it's on YouTube or on Twitch. There's the res collected. I just loved how Vinch, like... He so quickly gave up this pond. And I wonder if it was a strategy to only make two fish here. I think it was some level of adaptation because his dock was actually delayed. But he's like, oh, you're going to commit double dock and make spend a lot of resources on that and the ships. I will go land army then. And I'll just shift my focus away elsewhere. And then it was just always Vinchester controlling the game on land. And he did transition to farms very quickly as well, right? So it wasn't like he was hurting for food. Still had some fish around, and yeah, to dominate the Japanese when the Japanese made that many fishing ships is extremely rare. I think another thing about the main event when it comes to guessing who Vinchester is, Vinchester played Huns twice. It's not common. Not common on this map. A lot of people have not been doing that. So if we see Huns and we see Cross in the main event on whatever hero we're seeing that with, maybe it's a sign that it's Vinchester. I don't know.